there ain't no stopping us Fly without boarding pass Couldn't catch me, I'd be moving fast Call me a shooting star Let them know who you are Flying up in a bar Wish on a star Time to show them who's in charge Call me a shooting star Said I might be big in a game like she went and got them breast implants I said I'm moving too fast, didn't even get a glance I'm ready to eat up track like I'm seated in a restaurant yeah. If you have swag like mine, you know it's best to flaunt yeah. We are hating because you want Shining like it's neon, drop like kings of neon Shooting stars across the galaxy I stand out so don't be mad at me I'm with my strategy When I turn up, then I just have to leave Shooting stars across the galaxy I stand out, so don't be mad at me Infiltrate, I'm with my strategy When I turn up, then I just have to leave Yeah, 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 shoot, 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 shoot yeah, 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 shoot, shoot, yeah, 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 shoot, 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 yeah, 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 shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh. Morning, people, welcome to Tottenham Away. It's the late night show, as always. Tottenham three, Nottingham Forest one. We are officially in fourth place. We've actually taken advantage this time around. We've taken Aston Villa's spot after they slipped up yesterday in fourth place. Champions League is now ours to lose. Uh, to be honest with you, the way it's going for Man United and Chelsea and the rest. I think we're going to get Champions League even by default if we come fifth. So it's all good, though. We won't finish full. Um, but look, we're here. We're going to break down today's game, the good, the bad, and what we think is coming next. Um, let's let's say hello to the brothers that have joined us. Mari, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. 3-1 um, victory. Um, van de Ven, uh, that's, he's awesome. Um, um, Bentacor, uh, this is the reason why we, we miss him, and he, he's he's good. Um, we'll get into the game, the front three. Yeah. But 3-1, um, and like you just said, I think we're going to get top four, top five by default. Top five, you know, if, if we continue to do good in Europe, the uh, Premier League, then we get the uh, Champions League. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Uh, Dan, 
How you doing, bro? You good? All good. Now the game's over. I mean, I ain't going to go too deep into it because we're going to talk about it anyway. But apart from that, I'm all good. I hope everyone else is fine. Adrian, how are you? How you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Went to the game. Uh, I'm sure we'll get into it. There was things I didn't like, what I saw. Uh, then also some other things which which I actually did like, actually. So uh, I'm sure we'll get into them. But big up to everyone in the chat and the pa and my fellow panellists. Big up to everyone watching the show, guys. <clears throat> Normally I go for every single person, bring your names up on the screen, say hello, hello, how you doing, big up. But guys, we've got 150 people watching already. If I do that, I'm going to need 15 minutes. So big up to all of you. Smash a like, subscribe. Make sure you follow Dan's channel, Hotspur Hood, Adrian on Facebook. Before we begin tonight, some sad news. Um, I'm going to let Adrian talk about this a little bit. So um, uh, if you haven't heard, Joe Kinnear passed away. Uh, BBC Sports reported it today. Uh, I think it was just after or just before kickoff. I can't remember. But um, for those of you who don't know, Joe Kinnear, He's a legend. He won a European trophy with Spurs. He won uh, domestic cups with Spurs. He's definitely been one of the players that actually stands for what Tottenham, some say, used to be, because it's not that now. Up for debate. I'm not going to go there. But Adrian, he's more your era. Mm. If you were to describe him in a, in two minutes, what, what would you say about Joe Kinnear? Quality, quality right fullback. I mean... He played in that 70s team. I, now, after, without going back to the cup final teams, the 71 team when we beat Aston Villa 2-0, two, two Chivers goals in extra time. Uh, I'm sure he would have played in that game. Uh, and then in the 72, the UEFA, UEFA Cup final over two legs. Remember, Chivers got the two goals away at Wolves and we drew 1-2-1 one, and we drew 1-1 one, one at home, lifted the cup. And then in 73, the League Cup again, Ralph Coates scored the winner. So I'm pretty sure Joe played in all three of those games unless he was injured and, I, and I'm missing something here. He was a quality fullback who played for Ireland. He was just, I mean, and him and Cyril Knowles, they played either side Phil, Bill, Mike England and, Pat, and a great <laughs> Pat Jennings was behind them, right? And then in front, you'd have Perriman, Pratt and Coates and you couldn't work for more free, dynamic, more hot. And they weren't just like, they had skill set as well, dynamic midfielders and up front what a variable front three you had martin peters martin chivers and alan gilsey i mean it it was a team you knew i knew before the season started when we we're kicking off we were going to win them cups we we're going to win something because i just knew the players were that good you know and these weren't in the days of big transfers i mean chivers only cost us 125 grand from southampton you know and uh, <clears throat> gilsey had been around a while yeah but joe Kinnear, i can't recall if he scored many goals in his career as a fullback, not many fullbacks do, but uh, there are the odd exception, of course. Stuart Pearce. How would you how would you how would you rate him compared to the other players in the league? Like, if if we were to rate Pedro Porro, you'd say he's probably one of the best wing backs in the league. When we had Carl Walker, Carl Walker was arguably the best right back in the country. He, he would so, so so good that Man City. Well, was it's hard with the game being so fast now. I, I couldn't say that he was better than Carl. For his time. For his time, Adrian. Oh, his time was good. They were attacking fullbacks, Knowles and Knowles and Kinnear. Cyril Knowles in the because uh, Cyril Knowles, the reason Cyril Knowles was an attacking fullback, he was actually a left winger originally. He was actually a striker and converted. So and he was quality, but Kinnear could defend. You know, I mean, they were both quick, and and he was a very good defender. You know, you'd say he's better defensively than Porro, but uh, yeah, uh, it. It's really hard, you know, when you're comparing different eras. And it's like with players, unless they are really similar in style, you're always, we get these questions for fun on shows, but it's like comparing apples with oranges a lot of the time when people want to compare two players, especially if one's from our club and another one's from a rival club, you know. So, yeah. Uh, no, was, and then he's had, he had a good career as a manager, didn't he? He went to manage Wimbledon and then... Uh, the owners of Newcastle took him up there, didn't they? They didn't work too well up there, did it? And he obviously had heart problems as well. Uh, so, yeah, but, uh, and he lived, didn't live far from you actually, because up, up at uh, Wetston, you know that posh road down Wetston that, like, that like, takes you. I don't, right? I, don't, I don't live there, but <laughs> no, no. feel free. No, but, I mean, on the way, I know you're in Bushill Park, you're not far from me, like, uh, but further. 
further down, I forget the name of that road that comes off there at Weston. Like, you just told all the people that want to assassinate me where I live, uh, um, Adrian. All right, I'm sure. You, I'm sure oh, you're good at dodging bullets, anyway. You're a bullet dodger, so you'll be off. You'll be oh, <laughs> You're a bullet dodger. That's what they call, uh, that's what they actually call uh, uh, bodyguards, bullet dodgers. Yeah, so you'll be fine. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, yeah, I mean, you. you well, you didn't have the media in the back of the day, so you didn't have debates and criticise players and all, but that was just a team that knew how to win and get across the line. You know, we've had other teams I've seen do the same, but like... It's, well, look, no, Joe, Andrew tells us Joe played in the FA Cup final that beat the scum Chelsea, so uh, even, yes, more, when, even more legendary status. Yeah, yeah. Greaves, uh, Greaves, you, Greaves played in that final hall, and we won 2-1 with goals from Frank Saul and Jimmy Robertson. Yeah. You know? And uh, yeah, I mean, we, I think yeah, yeah, they had a good side, Chelsea. Then, um, Mari, Dan, do you want to say anything about Joe Kinnear? Uh, is there anything you'd like to add to it? Yeah, they talked mm -hmm. about, about him on the uh, NBC uh, broadcast here, mm -hmm. states, and um, and it's I, I, I always it's always a blessing to hear those, uh, you know, from you know to hear Adrian to hear. Um, Kim's dad, uh, uh, Arthur, talk about the glory days when we had glory days when we, you know, when they mm -hmm. talk about Jimmy Greaves and when we won the league, when we won the Epic Cup, when we won in Europe, mm -hmm. and you know, hearing um, even Ellie, and so for me, I it, it brings a smile to my face, and it's just you know, my only hope is that you know, as a club, that you know. Of course, they will respect him the next home game, um, but also as a club to just to remember that we had glory days. We can have that again. Mm. All you need to do is have ambition, true, true ambition to be able to experience that glory. So for me, man, you know, I smile. I even get a little jealous because, man, you guys have seen glory where I've only seen it once the calling cup. So it's, um, yeah. Mm. And I'd say he's a very, I'm not the best on history when it comes to that, but I do know he was a good player, good manager, was definitely with the team when uh, we were actually a good cup winning team. So credit where it's due and respect to the bloke. Mm. For me, anyone that wins trophies at our club, is a legend. Um, <laughs> even if even if they're not good, they get legendary status because they've won us silverware. So well, he, won the, he won the FA Cup with Wimbledon, didn't he? Was he manager when they won that? When they beat was Liverpool the, in the final, was he was manager? He the, wrong? Was that, like, was that the was that the crazy gang they used to call? Yeah, it? that was a crazy gang. Yeah, I was I was a kid. I remember that. That was a, and yeah, Liverpool, was Wimbledon, Liverpool, like Wimbledon, eight, seven or something. Was it eighty seven? Someone check online. Let us know in the chat. I can't be bothered to go and look myself. <laughs> Something like that. I mean, round about, and, and they, they said, <laughs> it was like the Liverpool players could hear the fucking ghetto blasting music in in the, in the uh, Wimbledon changing room at the time. And when they, you know, when the two teams come out side by side, you had all the Wimbledon players, the crazy clan going, they're all like ripping it, roaring up, and all that, and all the Liverpool look look a bit bemused by them, and everybody expect Liverpool to thrash Wimbledon. And who scored the Liverpool, goal? Liverpool, the that 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 was some people say that's that's one of the biggest ever FA Cup upsets in a yeah. final. And Sunderland Bob Stoko won as well against Leeds. Was it against Leeds? I think it was. Was it Laurie, well, did uh, Laurie Did Laurie score the winner in that goal? I can't remember. I don't know. I remember all you're, this you're, stuff. You're, 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 you're talking to people that can't compete with your history, so <laughs> it no, I, I don't know. I remember it. Well, really, I don't. I think there's, a, there's just, a couple in the chat that might be able to help, but look, there's no in history and living history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can go up to about the eighties, maybe. Mm. But look, rest in peace, Joe Kinnear. Condolences right, to yeah. the family. Spurs legend that you are. Glad we won today for Joe. Um. So yeah, not in the forest. Um. Do you know what? I, I won seventy five pounds today. Because um, nice. On um, I never win any money. I always lose. I always lose money. Mm. But on Mari's show that he did on Thursday. I predicted Arsenal to beat Brighton 3 0 and Spurs to beat Forest 3 1. I thought, Do you know what? I put a bet on it. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. 
<laughs> it came in. It never comes in. So thank you. Thank you to the gods. Um, although I would have been happy if Brighton won. I'm not going to lie. Brighton won, I would have been happy. But... I'd... Okay, look, but... we did... We, we we did play Forest. I don't think the result was a surprise to anyone. We were, mm. we beat them with ten men at their ground, two 0 So I'm sure we can beat them at our ground with eleven men. Um, starting lineup. Um, Basuma kept his place. Benson Call was dropped. In came Pape Sar, and then across the front three again. Kulu started on the bench, and we went with Johnson, Vernon on the wide areas. Otherwise, pretty much the same. Uh, on the bench, we had. Austin in goal, Emerson, Davies, Dragusin as the defenders. Then we had Benton Core, Kulu, Lacelso, and Hoiberg as the midfielders. And Dane Scarlett, the only recognised striker on the bench because Richie is injured. All the midfielders and the striker came on at some point. Some people say that the half time subs changed the game. We'll get into it. Stats wise, tells a bit of a different story from the result. Yes, we had more possession, as we always do, but. Total shots, Forest were not a team that were pinned back for 90 minutes and didn't create. They had mm -hmm. 13 shots, only four less than us. On target, almost the same. Number of passes, of course, we had more. We had much higher uh, possession stats, so I expect us to have more passes. Clear-cut chances, exactly the same. Guys, I want you to remember this, clear-cut chances. Remember that, because I'm going to come back to it later on. I'm going to I'm gonna show you something that I've been analysing recently, because I mm -hmm. think I've sussed out... A problem at Spurs. Um, corners we dominated, but overall it wasn't a one-sided game like the possession. The result says they had chances, they had good chances, and they had um, Woods. Yeah. yeah, no, Woods, uh, and also he was offside for one as well. Yeah. Right. Got off to a decent start, gone one nil up. Timo Werner with his kind of typical cross low into that. Penalty uh, box area in front of the goalie. Um, another own goal uh, for Tottenham Hotspur. But I think we are number one now in the Premier League for own goals scored in our mm -hmm. favour. I think we're number one. So either teams just shit themselves when they play Spurs or we are putting that much pressure in the box. We're forcing errors. I think it's the latter. I think we're forcing the errors. But what did you make of the start? What did you make of the goal, guys? Uh, Mari? Um, uh, with that starting lineup. Uh wasn't really a surprise. Um, I knew Kulu was going to start, so kudos to uh, Ange seeing that Kulu is not going to give you anything on the wing, so I saw that. Um, not to start, you know, we had control, but, you know, weren't clinical till the point where Timo Werner just do it, you know. You kind of knew that they were going to score for us because the way he passed it in and the the guy that scored for uh, Forrest was not going to stop that ball on the momentum. So it was just, you know, um, good start, one nothing, And then, as usual, we let the other team get back in the game where it could have been 2-1 after they scored. Um, VD, we did make a mistake. Um, even NBC Sports was saying um, when uh, Forrest scored and then, you know, and then Romero, the ball goes through his leg because he thought he was going to block it. And then Coral couldn't do anything with scores. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go again. And then they had a chance to go up 2 1. That might have kind of made the game a bit different. Um, and so I thought Kanji was giving a little bit of problems, you know, as soon as the, after we, we scored. But um, I know we'll, we'll talk about the second half, but I just thought the, the start was just typical, you know, mm -hmm. start that we have. It's, it's, it wasn't different, you know. Um, no one really stood out to me in the first half. I, I know I put it on the WhatsApp chat. So, yeah, that was the start for me. How did you find the start, um, Dan? Oh, very quickly, super chat from Dietrich Kane, who comes in with his energy, high positive <laughs> energy. Our 11 are oh, crap. I hope people realise Saar isn't good enough for a league title push and Adogi is being targeted by opposition for his defensive inability. We will get into... The defensive side mm. of things for Forest goal in just a minute, Dietrich. Brother, thank you for your super chat. Matt, start to the game 1 0 up. Um, own goal. Spurs actually had some good pressure, and uh, we mm. were causing them quite a few problems the first 15 20. Yeah. I think first 10 minutes, we had total control of that. 
a total control. And then it was the same old Spurs thing. All of a sudden, it literally just... It's like someone turned the light off. And they was all over us. I think by the end of that first half, we was lucky not to be 3-1 down. I mean, brilliant save by Vicario. And definitely a bit of unluck by them smashing it into the post. I think any normal player would have just drilled that mm. as hard as they could. And I think the poor fella was just unlucky in that aspect, which is good for us. Midfield non-existent i think Ange made brilliant decisions and he's doing what i've been shouting that i want him to do and that is make the subs when it matters not when we're three nil down and i think that took a bit of bottle by him to take both central midfielders off and replace them with two others the soma it's why he even started i'd say that's the main mistake that was made i've been saying for about three weeks now that i would rather start hoiberg than uh basuma because of what we're asking him to do as a DM, I think Hoiberg is better than Basuma doing that. As I describe Hoiberg, he's not good, I know that, but his style of play is a bit of a poor man's Roy Keane. So nowhere near as good, but he's got that same idea of play as him. A defence, again, this Ange ball is not winning me over. We keep playing with our defence like that, when we do have a significantly good defence, when we go and play games like City, when we go and play games like Liverpool, Arsenal, and even quicker games on the average, we're going to get torn a two one, a new one. We're going to the Champions League and start playing like this. We're going to concede goals left, right, and centre. And this is the bit I'm not liking. We are conceding too many goals. But after the first half, he made the subs, and I think they made a massive difference. Because at one stage in that first half, I thought we looked proper threatened. Listen, Dan, we'll get we'll get into the whole game. I just want to get everyone's quick opinion on the start to the game because mm -hmm. I actually thought Spurs started strong, um, mm -hmm. which I've seen many games. But Adrian, we've we've done it again, haven't we? Where we start strong, mm -hmm. but against West Ham, one 0 up. Like we've done many times this season. Um, I remember we started strong against Chelsea as well. In fact, in fact, the first 15, 20 minutes against Chelsea is one of the best starts I've seen from Spurs Villa, this season. West Ham as well. But then, like like Dan says, the lights go off and we just look like we're 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 a bang average football team. Mm. And good teams will bury us. We're mm. lucky it was Forest. So why 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 I'm not we sure the good teams will bury us but we'll come on to that later as well. Uh well I, the chances the the point I'm the point I'm trying to say is the chances we're giving away when the lights go off, good teams will put those in the back. Oh, of yeah, 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 yeah. We've, we've so, missed more. I don't know how many big chances we've missed this season, but we've probably missed more than any other team. Uh, yeah, the first 15, 20, I agree with you. We was all over them. I was actually thought today, even the result, even though I was exasperated at half-time with a goal we conceded, that, that really pissed me off big time to concede a goal like that. A doji again. That's the third yeah. time in the match on the row he's got. Well, well Poro struggled defensively there again. You see, if you're going to play in that inverted fullback role and get forward, you've got to have intelligent awareness, you know, to spot danger. You know, if you haven't got the ball, don't stand around upfield like a, like a Serge Aurea would do or something like that. You know, <laughs> at least think, right, let's drop back now or something like that. He did, mm. But I actually thought today, I know we've all been critics of Werner and, and Johnson. I thought they both had good games. I did, honestly. I thought Werner was very good on the left. I thought and, Werner had a very good game. I'll go with that and, one. And, I thought he had a good see, game. And... When I could see what Johnson was trying to do when he was doing that little shift, quick feet, just dragging the ball to one side and and slipping a delicate, incisive path through to a player, whether it be on the wing or try inside the box, you know, and thought, yeah, you'll get assists if you do that. You will get assists if you do that. So that was OK. On the other hand, like Sonny had a hand in a couple of goals, but it did very little, run around a lot. But it's just one of those games that wasn't him. Maybe a fit Richarlison might have done better. It's always hard because it's what picking people for games here and there. It should be dependent if you know what the other team plays like, really, and pick a team. What Ange said, I pick a team to win a game. You know, that's when I pick my players. But I'll just get up to the first half. I mean, they could have had a second easy, couldn't they? They got a sloppy goal. Could have possibly had a third, but we've got a. I think he's virtually balling on a world class goal court myself. And he's because he's done it so consistently. This is this isn't like this isn't gonna be a one off season for him. He's a very, very good goalkeeper. 
without a doubt. Van Van der Ven had a very good game. He he sometimes he's a bit hesitant on the ball before he scored and all that. You watch him on the ball, and he's a bit hesitant. There was a couple of times I, I was seeing him. It was as if he didn't know what to do with it. And then he first personally looked for Romero Marshall's the back because everything goes through Romero. And I know at times everyone's going, oh, why don't you move it quicker, move it quicker, move it quicker? Well, I'm sure Romero would if, if there was someone on or a pass on for him to do it. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I just think he's such a quality, quality centre-back. Fair enough, Alf, if you don't agree with me. I haven't got a problem with people who don't agree with me. I've only, only expressed an opinion. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the... The fallbacks, again, or inverted fallbacks. You doggy got forward a good times, a few good times. He got into some good forward positions, but no, no, you've got the intelligent awareness to know when to do that, and you know when when to run forward and save your energy and whatever. Although he seems to have. Well, then, uh, Adrian, let me let me let me let me let me move on to their goal, right? So okay. we've we've gone one nil up. Mm. We're on top of them. We can't get the second goal for a lack of creativity, a lack of finishing, the usual kind of complaints we have about our attack. But then <laughs> they, they had a chance where they took a shot from about 70 yards away and nearly lobbed our goalie. And luckily, mm -hmm. why, that was the goal of the season. Let's be honest about it. <laughs> um, that was the warning shot. Mm -hmm. There's a big gap in behind. Then they had a counter-attack where Murray... There, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you from my coaching perspective what I think is the problem. But I want to hear what you guys have to say because I we all have different views and opinions. Doesn't mean I'm right. On that first goal, um, they um, and even the commentary, the commentary at NBC Sports said, and I agree, Ben Deven should have done better in regards to uh, there was a Lamja um, being able to get past him with that with that you know run past by him. Get that pass off, um, which went through Romero's legs. I know Romero's trying to to deflect it, but it still went through his legs. And then Poro, of course, was behind Wood. And there was nothing he could do in that situation. Wood is going to score. Um, like it or not, he's going to score in that position. And so it, it, it happened. Like, like I said, BDB has been solid for, for, the, for the season. And he made up for it in the second half, but um, but that's the frustrating thing is, man, wait, can we ever get a clean sheet? You know, and and then mm -hmm. after that goal, you saw the momentum on some of the chess that Alonja was running right. I thought Alonja was, you know, was bossing bossing out the uh, defense because he had some chances that really set up for Wood. And if Wood, I, I'm still shocked that Wood missed uh, that. I tap it hit the bar, and then there was another one. I think in the second half where it just he missed it wide. It was just like, oh, that should be a goal. But um, the defense has to do better there. Has to. I uh, got a super it, chat. Dan, I'll come to you just quickly do the super chat. Tim Man says, um, "Big up, guys! I went to the game today. Credit to the team for the win, and at last taking shots at goal. But my worry is that if we play like we did in the first half versus a decent side, we'd be three or four nil down." That's kind of what I was saying to Adrian a bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Tim, man, um, I agree with you. Thank you for the mm -hmm. super chat. Dan, why do you disagree? Or why, why did you say we can't? Well, first things first, that weren't Van der Ven. That was a doji that screwed that up well and truly. Van der Ven got caught wide because he was trying to cover Udoji. So Van der Ven is in no blame for that whatsoever for me. I mean, when you've got someone like Udoji, and we know he's quality, but that's three or four games I think I've seen that on the trot now mm. where the ball's gone past him and he's just jogged after it. He needs to pull his finger out and get back to what he was doing at the start and chase that ball so that our centre doesn't have to drift out so wide to try and cover his backside because there's nobody there. Then the DM has to come back and then we're just totally naked in the middle. So for, for me, that one, that was 100% down to a doji the way it started, not Van der Ven. So Mari blames Van der Ven. You say it's more doggy. Uh, Dundaldork Super Chat says, my boy Van der Ven, what a hit. This guy can do anything. Absolutely. We will get onto that goal. We mm -hmm. did not we did not miss that strike. Um, Adrian, I'm, who's, I'm, at for the, who's at fault for the goal, in your view? It's, well, it's on our left side again. So you're going to blame VDV and your doggy. You know, your doggy is, Dan rightly said, has been poor, especially when there was no cover for Dragerson when we were away at West, West uh, Fulham, things like that. 
and also in the West Ham game. Van der Ven's, Van der Ven's a left-sided centre-back when they score from a header. Where was he? You know, where was he? I mean, look, I love the player. These are young players. I'm never too harshly rejecting a player under 24. Once they're 24 years of age, it's my little guideline for myself, right? Then I'll start to be more critical or even harshly critical if I have to do a severe critique on a player. But, yeah, I mean, like, it was, it, it was such a blame. Well, you could blame them both. It was a poor goal giveaway. A come down our right outside and carve us open like that anyway, you know. Even the, we, It could have been stopped on the right wing. It was, someone slipped and fell, didn't they, when they were making a challenge, wasn't it? I'd have to look at the highlights again. Um, yeah. Look, these are young players. Van der Ven will take all the plaudits, probably get man of the match because he scored a cracking goal. Fair enough and good, good luck to him, right? And I know as he matures, he'll become an even better player as will your doggy. But this is the thing with a young side. We're a young team. Kulu didn't play. He's only 23. you got Saar, right, who wasn't at his best today either, right? Uh, and we know he, he, he can run forever. He never, he's never going to run out of steam over 90 minutes, but he's just like... it's. And the thing is the shape of the midfield, isn't it? But I'm going off the goal. Go on, carry on, Phil. No, that's fine. Um, Daddy says <coughs> he blames a doggy. Mm. Dan, you're right, it was a dogie, but not for the way you think. Watch it. A dogie was ball watching, he followed the ball and didn't watch his space. Mm. Look, he didn't chase the ball either. When it went past him, <laughs> he jogged after it blatantly, and then before it even came level with the penalty area, mm. he just sat back like that and sort of shrugged mm. his shoulders. He well, blatantly look, got caught and he didn't even chase it. Uh, match on the drop. Big up to Mr. Boxer, which has just joined us. Right, I'm going to tell you what I think. This is the coach's perspective. Buckle up. <laughs> you might agree, <laughs> you might disagree. <laughs> Go on. Um, for me, this is 100% on Adogi and Basuma. Both of them are to blame. And I'll try and explain. Well, when you attack a team, the one thing you want to do more than anything is to split the centre-backs. A good team... The centre-backs are never more than 10 yards away. If one goes, one tucks behind. If one goes wide, the other follows. Mm. And th there should be that partnership where they've got each other's back. Van der Ven and Toby were brilliant at this. If you can split the opposition's defenders, you're in. And this is exactly what they did to us. And it was Basuma and Adogi that allowed the attackers to split our defence. Let me show you. So... Look at the gap between Romero and Van der Ven. That's that's kind of how you want it. The player that Adogu was marking, he's passed the ball up the line, and you can see the Nottingham Forest player going out wide. Now, Basuma, <clears throat> he was caught in two minds. Do I stick with the player that's next to me, or do I go out wide? A proper number six goes out wide. What he's done is he's stuck with the man. What should have happened is Basuma should have followed the black arrow out wide, and Van der Ven should then mm. keep his eye on the player that's with Basuma. Mm. Now, the Dogie's lost his man. Van der Ven has gone out wide because Basuma didn't go to the channel. Look at the gap now between Romero and Van der Ven. Nice that is it. the problem. And as we progress the play, the player on the ball that Van der Ven went to, he didn't go, he didn't take on Van der Ven. He's passed it around him. So look. How can you blame Van der Ven? The ball got passed around him. Adogi's left the player, allowing him to make the run. Basuma still has got time to run into that massive gap between Romero and Van der Ven. By the time the Forest players got the ball, Romero's now had to come out wide. Look where Romero is. He's now had to come out wide. So you pulled both centre-backs out of shape. And then it's a simple pass in. Basuma still out of play. So Adogi not staying with that number 21 letting him run past him, and Basuma not once tracking back either down the I, middle or out I wide. Last week. Remember I said that about midfielders? I said it last week. But the commentator for NBC Sports is former Liverpool Coventry City player Stephen Warnock. He's the one who said it was VDV's fault on, on that goal. I, but, I disagree, um, that, Murray. I disagree. I'll tell you why. Yeah. What do you want V to what do you want VDV to do in this situation? No, you played it. No, it well. I'm just saying that who said it on NBC Sports. I wanted to just yeah. 
and, and was a former player. I would, I, would, I, would, I would like to ask him the question. I know it's not you. I'd like to ask him the question. What do you want Van der Ven to do then? He's the last man in that position that the CDM hasn't gone out wide to do what a CDM mm -hmm. is supposed to do. If your wing backs are caught, it's the CDM that's going to shift left and right to cover. He hasn't done that. Odogi has left his man. What 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 would that commentator like Van der Ven to do? Van der Ven did the one thing you got to do: emergency defending. They call it. I've got to go and engage. Mm -hmm. And I, I'll probably say that commentator doesn't have a chance to rewind the tape and see. Well, he should because he has. Of course, he did. Twenty um, TVs, so he should be able to. But remember, yeah. I said last week. Well, it's opinions. Goal, it's opinions. He's allowed his opinion. He's allowed his yeah. opinion. Yeah, that first goal with um, Luton last week. All, the blame goes on Basuma, Sar, Bass, like because they were all walking, they were jogging back. Mm -hmm. So, see, so that's mm -hmm. the, that's why we need a proper six. Mm -hmm. I know we're gonna get to that, but we need someone who's a beast who's gonna run back, get back there. We, I mean, we need a, a Conte, we need a Rice, we need a Polina type of player um, to do that. Because Basuma, that's 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 mm -hmm. who. That's, that's I don't think with Hoiberg, you'd have so many problems doing that. And you know, I don't rate the plays, but like I said, he's a poor man's Roy Keane. But one thing you can definitely give with Hoiberg is he will give it everything he's got. He's like Ben Davis in that aspect. One thing you can rely on the player is they will try their hardest. Udoji, the fact that saying it's Udoji's fault, to me, that's a fact. That's that's not an opinion. That is a fact. Him, him yeah, yeah, it's assuming not coming back. But the more mm. I've got the um, with a doji is the fact that it's the fourth game straight that he's had, he's been beaten with a ball. And you can even blatantly see it in the pictures that you mm. showed. He jogged after it. He didn't even put his foot down and sprint after it. He jogged after it. And then by the end of it, he was further behind than everybody else. Now, we've all picked the man up all season and he has been brilliant all season. But you've got to pick out his bad points. Four games on the trot. For me, that's not acceptable. I don't care if he's only 21, 22. He's a professional football player getting paid a hell of a lot of money to fix up, fix up quick when you get caught four times, basically out of laziness. If he'd have at least chased his man, Van der Ven wouldn't have had to come so wide to him because the man would have been looking over his shoulder for the pressure on him. No pressure on him from behind, nothing. Van der Ven had no option yeah, but to cover that. You, you just you, you know, just highlighted a, a weakness in the squad because Ainge likes to play with attacking players. So obviously he's not going to play Davis unless it's no 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 no. When the ball gets put past the left, and he yeah. jogs after it. That yeah, is not good enough. He I know, jogged. but can I can I say I, can I say Hoybier is not the answer either? And I'll tell you no, why. If you look, I'll, I'll tell you why I don't think he's the answer. Coming off the bench, changing up a little bit, I can see why. That would make sense. But my problem with Hoiberg is this. Our number six, how many times you see Vicario pass the ball down the middle to the six or someone on the edge of the box who's under pressure? And what he does is he passes it straight back and then we then we get out the press or they check their shoulder and turn. Hoiberg as a six has to receive the ball. And you saw in the last four or five minutes when he came, he pointed, yeah, give it to me. He's running the box and he's passed it across the goal and given it to their striker. Mm. Yep. Do you remember that yeah, moment? Yep. He literally passed yep. it to their striker. So that that's my issue with Hoybier. In the way we play, from from a defensive <clears throat> from a defensive perspective, Dan, I agree with you. He would get out. Hoybier would read the danger and say, "No, no, centre back, you stay. You you trap the runner coming in the middle. I'll go out and save a dogie." But when we're playing out from the back, he's going to cost us. We, oh, we I totally. That's agree. where Basuma is actually good. Basuma is actually yeah. good at that bit. So but we need if, someone that can do both. We need Musa Dembele, basically. We need Musa Dembele. I, to, I totally get <laughs> it. But I think at the moment, the way I'm seeing this is our DM, personal opinion, I think he needs to be more of a mix of a DM and a, like the third defender, basically. Yeah, I agree. And I, I personally think you'll just get... I'm not saying Hoiberg is an answer. Far from it. Like I keep repeating it, he's a poor man's very keen. But I think you will get more out of him playing that way than Basuma, because for me, Basuma mm. has just been after his first five, six games, he's been total trash and shouldn't even be on the pitch. Yeah, but again, Udoji jogged after that bloody ball, fourth game on the trot. He's done this once or twice. I get it, yeah. but four games running, there's something not right there. He needs he, it, looks lazy. Yeah, I, 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 I also feel 
part of me feels, and I just and I just look at the way the centre backs operate together when there's panic, when when there's pressure, when there's um, like, you, you coach defensive lines. It's called um, defending when outnumbered. When you're outnumbered or when you're pulled out of position, you coach what to do in that scenario. And typically, what you want to do is dictate where the ball goes and delay. We end up going into last ditch defending, and and and. Listen, I'm talking from a basic coaching level. I'm not Ange. I'm not, I'm, I'm, you know, my level. I don't see that with Spurs. And I actually, I do think, I do think that we aren't giving enough time to defensive coaching with our team. We're so heavily dependent on the attacking side that when we are put under a bit of pressure defensively, we look, we look shaky. I mean, Alex, what do you think about that? What, what did you think about that goal and Spurs when we are called to defend? Do you think that? Do you think it like because Dan thinks this is going to cost us? This is you can't be consistent like this and win a league title. I, listen, I agree with Dan on this. I don't think you can win league titles like this. No, oh, never. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm like I said before. I'm, I'm I'm not really fussed about the defense. I think it's the attack. I think this season, these I think I think it's I've, I've made myself quite clear on that at the moment. Well, we scored three I goals think, today. Exactly. Well, well, no, yeah, but I think I think it's because of, I think it's because of Bentacore. Simple as that, and 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 because um, Van der Ven decided to shoot, which what people were were asking everyone to do, and that's it for me. You know what I mean? So you know, yeah, it, I think we need to sort it out in the summer. Yes, I think we do need. Um, I think it's down to better players and um, you know players that we can rotate as well. You know. Um, but um, I, I I I do feel at the moment um, I think we 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 need to I think I think you've said something about the stats as well that um, we haven't you know we're not doing enough in the final third and that's that's what for me is crucial for us mm. to, to to hurt the other team now because we are attacking team um, we're going to let in goals. I think that's the thing now. I think we're going to let in goals. I think we do need to... I, I think, yeah, that you, we're going to have to try and figure out something, yes. But that was something in the summer. I think that's trying to... I think that's something that we're going to have to look at in the summer when we're doing pre-season because this is where... Alex, he's going to have to practice. just so you know, I'll, I'll, the, the amount of goals we've scored this season, we are only six goals off of Liverpool and Man City. In the league, so in terms I, I, of I goals scored, less, we, mate. I, I, I couldn't care less, mate. I, but that's, I'm, I'm just that. saying that's a good stat. We actually I do know, score well, I, I, I couldn't care less. The I'm, goals I'm, against, I'm, which is bad. The goals. I, 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 I couldn't up, care I'm less, mate. Because I'm sorry, I, I think it's a bang average league, them uh, even more than sorry less, because I can't. Illa, I, could, Illa. I, I can't stand that front three. I cannot stand it now. Illa, if, you look at, if you look at, if you if you look at the um, sorry, let me remove this comment off the screen. If you look at the goals for. Arsenal have scored 10 more, but Liverpool and City are only six ahead of us. But goals against, That's we are works. 21 goals worse than Arsenal and we are 15 goals worse than Liverpool. It, 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 if we're just going by the numbers, OK, we're not looking at the eye test. If we just go by the numbers, goals conceded, hands down, is our biggest problem. Hmm. Yeah, it's not it's, good stuff. It's no, it's, it's not the defence here. It's Ange Ball that is the problem. It's not defence. It is Ange Ball, and I'll say it straight. Uh, Ange Ball. Dan, well, don't don't employ them. Then don't 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 have him as manager. Then well, that, well, hang on. I'm allowed to say what I want about the opinion. <laughs> that well, you know, you're there. allowed to say it, bro. But the thing is, though, well, you just so you just, I'm going to say it. it so, so let me say it. It's no, but I mean, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But okay. by what you're just saying, <laughs> by what you just said, you might as well just not have Ange in charge in the first place. No. Not at all. This is where I want my manager to adapt. And today, I will give him plenty of credit for what he done today for getting the subs right. But that's different. The problem is Ange Ball style. It is not good enough for the Premiership. Now, he could go and have the best defence out there on the planet. And we are still going to concede goals. Why? Because it is Ange Ball style that is conceding us goals. Well, yes, you get mm. your mistake. But it's the same thing over and over and over again. It's the Ange Ball style. You cannot play this way for 38 games straight against teams in the Premiership. Because if that would have been a better team today... Even if you've got the players to do it. No, no, no. Even if you've got the players. That defence, no. how, how high we push up, I say it again, best defence on this planet. Give me the best back four you can think of. 
and goalkeeper, they are still going to concede goals because of Angie's way of play. They are only doing what they are told to do. Steven, yes, they make again, their mess Dan, up. Again, Dan. Dan. Like I said, Stephen Warnock uh, was mentioning that. And and, and, and and Dan does pose a good question because even if you have the best defenders, it really, it, it really sets us up to have the other team have chances of scoring. And then that's a possibility. Hold on. Where, you know, I hate to bring up our rival where, where Arsenal, <laughs> what makes their defense so great is first they make the game boring for Ryder. They don't give up shots. I would rather, I would rather, I would rather my team not have attempts, right? Like the great trouble winning Inter Milan team, you know, um, even Barcelona, yeah, they had the ball. But the, the defense, because of Busquets and Puol and PK, right? They didn't give up a lot of shots, and the problem is that we're giving a lot of shots. So just get Conte it. back then, get Mourinho back then. That's uh, what I'm saying. Well, well, well actually, because Murray, it's like because you know it, it's just it's just ridiculous. I'm, 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 I mean, for goodness mm. sake, I don't even like the guy and defend him again. Yeah, again, Dan's making a point which makes no difference at the end of the day. If you're gonna if you're gonna start complaining about Ange Ball. Don't employ him in the first place, which is what he said in the favor. So it's I didn't. like again, you're saying, still well, you don't like say Ange Ball. You're saying if we don't do Ange Ball, well, why are you employing him in the bloody first place then? Right. <laughs> and, if he's a, and if he's a it's top point, manager, it's no point then, isn't it? He's still allowed to critique. It. I mean, you can yeah, like, yeah, but you can critique, but the thing is, though, the yeah. point is, he's I mean, told I, us already. He said yeah. this already. He's not quite saying to him. He's told us. He told us from the bloody get go, bro. I like it. Yes, so, so, so what do we talk about? What should we talk no, about? You can, have, you can critique him all you want, but the point is, though, I'm not know. saying that you can't critique. My point is, is that you're saying to him to change, uh, you're saying his Angeball is a, is a, I don't even hate the term Angeball anyway. His I don't like it either. His is, 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 is football's not right. Yeah? Right? So why get him in the bloody first place then? He said, if you don't like my, <laughs> if you don't like my style, do not employ me. Don't, don't even bother employing employ me because I'm still going to do it. I didn't employ him. And if I would have seen a manager play like that consistent, consistently, we all have our own opinion, I would never employ him. I personally, I'm, we won't go into this one, but I personally think if you brought Conte on, on now with that team, we would destroy things because that team has got Conte style written I all over it. Just, with different I will opinions. say this. Well, let me say this. Ange this needs to adapt. I started this. I will say no, this. No, Ange, Ange needs better players. You have to see let this. Go on, go on. I, I want to see this. I want to see this high line with a proper, proper six, a proper CDM. I would like to see that before I come to my final analysis of Ange Ball, how the defense is played. And I actually like this idea from Mo because um, you talk about Tapsoba. Someone mentioned Romero. If you watch Romero play in Argentina, even Otamendi, they allowed them to get in that CDM space. And Romero has done that a couple of times. Stuff will tell you, I've mentioned it. He did it in Italy, Mari. He did it in Italy. Yeah. He, he would get in that CDM space and play it well because he passes the ball well, he gets the ball well. And, and like, he has done it before, like, even for, for Argentina and where they uh, where they play. So that is not out of the question in the sense of, yes, yeah, signing to Soba, let him play in the back and maybe putting. Um, Romero in the in the six, I think he can actually play that. I like, suggested that a season or two ago, but we didn't have Van der Ven back there and all that. And I think Dan <laughs> even <laughs> in that particular time. But I don't think you're going to remove. I don't think Ange would see because Romero plays a shotgun quarterback, right? And he and he marshals the back four basically. I wouldn't mind seeing him as a, as a deep line CDM, but I, Ange is not going to play that way though, is he? He'll get red cards in that role. He'll get too many red cards. In a CDM role. Other thing is, he uh, did but cover he, it a couple of times at Atalanta. He's so, he's so, he's so good, good at spotting he's danger that he was no right or left to cover for the inverted fullbacks. And he in, and he's a great interceptor. I mean, he's so good on the ball. He's so good all round, actually. I he's a ball-playing defender through and through. I mean, Atalanta then, played him as then, a DM about three times. He hasn't received... I mean, He got one red card and yeah. he played OK. And but he's a ball-playing defender. People question his disciplinary yeah. record, and I think he's got one yellow card in 13 games. Yeah. One yellow card in 13 uh, games. 
no, yeah, he's no, cleaned up. up. He's cleaned up. He's cleaned yeah. up. Yeah, he's cleaned up. And I think he would embrace that role of being a ball playing defender, getting the ball, distributing from that CDM role. It's one option. I know if if Pep was the mm. our, our manager, he would he probably would have already done it. Hey, you know what, Romero, let me put you at the CDM, kind of like what he did with John Stones. And stuff. Like, like it, be able to experiment that. Um, but um, but we to be fair, we mm. gotta see a proper six. With, with Edge's defense, um, or yeah, or right. I'm going to come in from my angle. My angle is this: when we look at that side today, we have pace in the inverted fullbacks. We have pace across the front three. We have pace at the centre backs. Where don't we have pace? Madison's not fast. Basuma's not fast. Bentacor's our fastest midfielder, and you've got Young Saar. We haven't got the pace in midfield. When we lose the ball in midfield, getting back through the centre of the pitch is a problem. Then we're running back down the wings. Van der Ven's on his toes because we're trying to stop this. I, be I believe Ange ball work. I mean, it's not much different to the way Pep plays, but Pep's got better players and he makes it work. And I, I, this is why I think he's looking for... When I when I get alarm bells about Conor Gallagher, because this is why I think he's after box-to-box -box midfielders. He wants that energy in midfield. Then perhaps two that like someone who can support Ben Accor, and then then Madison can do his role. But if Madison's slow, I could see Madison playing as the Bobby Firmino on that side with two wide wingers. You wouldn't be breaking Andrew's structure of football. You'd still have your two inverted fullbacks. I believe it can work, Dan, but I just don't think we've got the players for it to work. And, and, that, and to me, you've just ben said it, Adrian. You've just said it. Why it will not work? Because we never will have the players that can do that. Because to do I mean, we that, we got away with the first ten games of the season, right? And, like yeah, we're, and I'll we're answer, very lightweight. Adrian, let me finish, mate. Let me finish. Yeah, first ten games of the season, five of them was pure luck. I don't care what anyone tells me. We should have been three 0 down at Man U. We should have had other times where we were significantly down. Five of those games was pure luck. But other five, yeah, we deserved and we muscled it. Mm. But it's never going to happen because we are never going to get the quality that Pep has got to be able to play that way for 38 games and win something out of it. Now, a cup, this could work fine, yeah? But for 38 games, this style of play, unless you have got the best, it's not happening. And Tottenham are never going to get the best. I mean... So, uh, for this I style agree. of play, if you're happy with a manager that he's going to... Even though he wants to win, yeah? But his style of play is the best going to get us fourth because we concede too many goals. That's what he's going to be. I think his style of play is too... The premiership's too right. good for it unless you've got and the what, best what, of the best. I mean, but we've only conceded, I think, two goals from breakaways. It isn't the high press that's... But Adrian, the Adrian, Adrian, hold on, hold on. I, 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 okay, very quickly. Dietrich Kane, Super Chat, says, Fact, we haven't kept a clean sheet at home since October, which is True. pretty bad. True, Dietrich. I, 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 want, I, want, I want to tell you what I think is the issue with the defence, right? Hmm. Because I've been analysing it for a few weeks, but I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to talk some crap. For me, when when you look at this, um, the goals conceded, the gap between us in terms of score, goals that we score, and the top three is not big. That, that's not a hard gap to close. You just buy a couple of better creative players and players that can finish off some chances instead of missing open goals. This goals against is a big gap to close. You're talking about closing 20 goal difference, 15 goal difference. So the question is, why are we conceding more goals? Now, if I was to say to you, why are we conceding more goals? What would what would what, what would you say is the big difference between us and the other team? In fact, would you say that there's probably more shots taken against us? Would you say that's an issue? Well, the only difference is Liverpool gets a lot of shots. Um, done towards um, Liverpool uh, accepts a lot of shots, and so they've been fortunate. Um, you know they got Virgil Van Dyke, you know back there, and you know they they I mean they have, you know, they they the, the defense have been good. Their midfield has been playing better. Um, McAllister it has to be a Murray, Murray, Murray. With with, with the Murray. amount of goals we conceded, right? If I ask you guys a question, like just. With just a common well, sense. Arsenal has Rice and, and, and City has Rodri. We don't have hey, that. Hey, 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 the question is, the question is, if we've conceded so many more goals than the top three, would you say 
that we probably give more shots away to the opposition than those teams. Would you say that's fair? Oh, yeah. Yeah, by far. Especially against like right. Arsenal. Arsenal yeah. barely check shot. Okay, yeah. check this out. Check this out. These are the amount of shots against the Premier League teams in 2024. Spurs oh, yeah. are third from bottom. We're third from bottom. We've yeah. conceded the least amount of shots out of all the other Premier League teams except for Arsenal. We're tied with Man City. So when you look at shots against us, we are equal to Man City and Liverpool. So the question is, hold on a minute then. If we're conceding lots of goals... Stepping, because he likes to bring, he likes to... Talk a lot I, about I, I, I don't I don't listen to when he speaks half the time, right? Because he makes it up. <laughs> he does, he makes it up. Right? If if we are conceding it loads more goals compared to the other top three teams, but the shots against us are the same, why are we conceding more? So is it because the opposition are just really clinical only when they play Spurs? So teams are just clinical when they play us, or what about the quality of those shots against us? And when you look at that, the XG against us is high. So what So what, my, what I'm trying to say is this. We concede more than our main rivals, but we have the equal amount of shots against us. The reason we're conceding so, much, so many goals, guys, is because the quality of chances we give away are super high. Mm -hmm. When you look at the amount of penalties step pieces, dead ball situations, that, that's quite a quality chance because you're taking a set piece, a corner, a free kick, a penalty is unopposed. Defenders can't go and tackle the ball. That's, that's a dangerous situation. And the one-on-one -on -one or the clear chances in front of goal, like look at the goal they scored against us today. It's practically a tap-in. The shots mm -hmm. that we do give away are so high quality, that's the problem. They're hard so they're to miss. <laughs> Right, so the question is, Dan, why are they so high quality? It's because and of it, how we get caught out every time. Correct. It's, it's, it's the way rare, we get caught. It's, it's the it's way the we get caught. inverted wing backs being so far up. We're naked on the left, naked on the right, and even down the middle where they're so pushed, they're so high up pushed, we nearly got lobbed from the bloody halfway line. Hmm. And it happens time and time again. Exactly down the wings, either one of them when it's naked, one of them has to drift, so the other one comes across, straight across goal, tap it in the back of the net. That's how you could say, I'd say, what, about half the goals against us have been this season? Mate, mate, Dan, spot on. The issue at Spurs, if we want to push higher up, yeah, the league table, the issue at Spurs is not the goals scored. That We're good. At, we're good at that. We can improve. That's not a hard improvement. Just sign better players. The, the, the big, big chances that we give away are frightening. We we actually, if you think about it, we keep possession of the ball more than every team we play normally. We have 70% of the ball, the opposition have 30%. So if you've got the ball, the opposition can't score the ball. That's the whole basis of possession-based football. So we keep the ball so well that the other team, they don't get much time on the ball, which is why the shots against us is low, because they only get 30% of the ball. And of that 30% of the ball... We're the best team at winning it back high up the pitch. So teams don't really get many chances against us because we play aggressive, high press, high press possession-based football. That's why you play possession-based football, to stop the other team from scoring and so you can create more. And, 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 and we are doing that. But when we do give teams a chance, mate, we're literally gift-wrapping it. We're literally saying, here you go, Merry Christmas. Some of them I could score the bloody goals. It's that easy that we give it to them. And it's the same way every time. It's one of three ways. It's either straight down the middle where the others have had to drift out anyway because the others have come so far up or they're inverted, whatever, getting in Madison's way, that they've had to drift out of it or one of them. So it's straight over the top. And if they got pace there, they're on us. If it wasn't for our goalkeeper and Van der Ven, I reckon we'd have lost about eight more games than we actually had. Mate, Vicar Vicario, Vicario has made the XG against us lower than what it would be. Without Vicario, mm -hmm. if we had Hugo in goal, or what's his name, Foster, guys, we'd honestly, we'd be one of the worst teams in the league at giving away big chances. Mm -hmm. So, when, when, when he, we play, he's a brilliant yeah. signing, right? So, Vicario is a top signing. <laughs> no doubt about it. The problem is, what I see, it's all having all this possession. It's the speed and the use of the ball in possession. 
It's not quick enough. But when we're we scoring the goals, them, Adrian. We're scoring the goals. I know we're scoring goals, though. I know we're scoring goals. But when we played them first 10 games, this is my opinion on what I see, eight wins and two draws, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, all right, yeah. we were under pressure at time for Man United, who could have scored two early on before we scored and all that. But we, we had the energy. We dug in and we wound them up and they picked a few bookings up before half-time. Why? We, we were a bit more aggressive, right? And then the second half, we took over. We passed the ball quickly. We were through them. Uh, sorry, you doggy scored. I forget who was scored, Russ or whatever. And um, it was better. But when, when the midfield pattern we've got, when this Rondo style of play we've got, we under-hit and over-hit passes and start losing the ball. Our midfielders, they're too slow to help out. Madison's too slow. Bissouma's too slow. Saar, he's young. He's got loads of energy. I'm not sure how quick he is. Bentacore's our best midfielder. When he's fit, he'd be my first pick. But, I mean, uh, he's and and it's all too slow. We've got pace everywhere else in the, around the pitch, but we ain't got it in midfield. So you want to get the best out of Madison, play him as a false nine. Play him as a false nine where he ain't got to do that. And let's have and then you could play the other three midfielders behind him. You, yeah, but Basuma didn't even try Star to Basuma. get back. Adrian. Sorry? Adrian, he didn't Basuma didn't even try to get back or try no. to get across. I, I do you know what my brother said well, to me? Well, we've got Mil Mille Jedinek and you've got Matty Wells there, are supposed to be our defensive coaches. Tell me, tell me tell me tell me what you think about this, Adrian. Adrian, what do you think about this, right? My, my, my brother, I've done all my coaching badges with him, mm. right? With the same with the same level. He said to me a few months ago, yeah, um, Basuma's gonna drop off. I said to him, What are you talking about? He, he called it, he called it. And his his reasoning was <clears throat> the first 10 games of the season, he had something to prove, he had a point to prove. But now there's no competition. He knows no matter what, he starts. He yep. knows he's the number six. Do you think that the reason Basuma doesn't even try to get back, doesn't even try to get across, is because he's just got comfortable at Spurs? Do you so think even the Marley coach dropped him? Even the Marley coach dropped him. So he's seen something. There's something, something's not right there with Basuma. I see a couple yeah. of his twists and turns there. Oh, that's all that's good. Ease. We want to see a lot more of that from you during a game. But I see him do a couple of things. I did see him actually come back a couple of times to pick the ball up, which he did a lot of in the first 10 games. But hes I wouldn't play him. I was surprised he started in front of Bentecourt today. I, no. I wouldn't play him on the current form. Well, he needs, he needs just, a short, sharp I shot. I want to see Romero do. I want to see Romero or even VDV grab a zoom. I'm like, dude, mm. you got to track back. you got to help us. That's two weeks in a row you've done this bull crap. Twice you've been jogging, you're not not there. I'm telling you, last week they, they showed a different clip, a different view from 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 the from the keeper's view, and this dude was walking back on that yeah. counter. And, and Madison's Madison's useless defensively, and which you've got to protect his ankles anyway, because every, every man his dog wants to kick him. And, and right. again, if I'm Romero or or anybody, or even Sonny, I'm grabbing uh, someone like yo, wake the fuck up, play defense. You have number you six. Know what it shows. You got to check. Grill... Come on. We all grill Conte for it, yeah? Stubborn. Totally grill Conte for it. It's got obvious his why plays, Conte weren't mean? playing him. It's I obvious why Conte weren't stubborn. playing him. Conte see it. Conte see what we did not see. And I was one of the ones at the start who big up Basuma for being one of the best midfields in the Premiership because we all know how gifted the player is. And when at Brighton, he totally took it to the cleaners against every big team. But Conte being the world-class manager he is, blatantly saw what Basuma was like and didn't play him. For the defensive style, he preferred playing skip True, and everyone and thinks why, that's crazy. Why, why was there such a difference? Such a difference when Bentecourt and La Celso came off, right? In fact, that was, well, I thought that was a big difference. And it, no, and it, it was Bentecourt early. and Hoiberg at first. Huh? And Hoiberg made a massive difference in that game. He did. He it gave a couple of sloppy balls away. In fact, guys, guys. He looked for a forward uh, ball, Hoiberg. I'll give uh, you two easy gamble. George, you've said you think we had a lower XG than Forrest. I've just looked at it. We did. The quality of Forrest's chances today were better than ours, yet we won 3-1. And that that is the Achilles heel. It, it, mm -hmm. Who cares I, about XG, it? though? Alex, do you know what? Let's, I'll tell you what. Let's move on from it because there's plenty of other parts of the game we need to discuss. What <laughs> did you think about this, right? Should he have been sent off? Yes. Well, well, I, well I didn't see that. Yeah, I, was I, I, I must have been looking around. You know, in certain parts of games, you mind you you wonder. Are you looking at something? Like a little dig. 
But some yeah. people say, come on, that's not a proper punch. But others have say others are saying that's at least a yellow card. And he's already on the yellow, so two yellows he should have been sent off. And also, also, because I want to balance this out. There was a tackle on this guy, knee height. Yeah. Should that guy, was it Danilo? Should he have been sent off? Because if Romero did that, I'm surprised you know that what, didn't go if to that was Romero, yeah. guys. Oh, yeah. Romero, you know what the conversation is, right? Oh, you know what the, is. The, the referee was good actually with the Madison thing because even though I didn't quite see it, when I looked around, someone said, what, what do you think of that? And I went, Oh, I wasn't looking, sorry, the guy next to me. And then I looked over and the referee pulled them together, have a chat. And that probably influenced VAR actually because the referee's dealing with it on field. So they took no action. If he hadn't, then VAR may, may have looked at it. And I, I still, I still haven't, I've got to be honest, I haven't seen the incident. I see the referee talking to the players. So I just thought that's handbags, you know, but I didn't. I, didn't I personally that. think Madison and Danilo both should have been punished. I think, yes, if, if that was against us in that situation, I want a yellow mm. card for that. And the, and the foul on the Celso, if that was Romero, it only ends one way. <laughs> red, yeah. It won't I, be a yellow, be red. I, I think they are got both wrong in my view. Yeah. I, I don't think it was that much of a savage tackle. He was leaning back and your leg goes up, but his studs were still up and it got him right in the kneecaps. That he, any other day, players have been sent off for worse. And the thing with Madison is, go, go take it back 20 years to what I talk about and that. People used to bloody headbutt other people in the side of the head and still stay on mm -hmm. the pitch, for God's sake. The way mm -hmm. it is now, it is not far off a non-contact sport. Madison... Yeah. I don't even think Madden should have got a yellow for that. He should have got a straight red. Mm. Whereas yeah, the other about, fella, what about, a what about yellow the, was fair. What about the penalty decisions? They didn't even... <sighs> no didn't no even penalties. No penalties. I'm sorry. I one, of them no penalties. Thought, one of them I thought, I would like to have seen it again. I don't oh, no, 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 think it's a play. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. I, don't, I, I, I think Madison's, uh, Madison is... Um, I think we're going to see his character now because for me, um, we'll test his character because at the moment he's uh, I'm I'm not there with him at the moment, and if we're going to have a guy some being he's a got captain, to stop trapping it off against referees because if a player played for me and they got a yellow card for dissent, they're going to get massively fined or dropped. Well, is it, he's my, got my to problem cut is, that shit out, right? Well, the, pro the, pro the problem I have with it, I know he's getting a lot of ankle taps. He's getting he's getting he's being dipped out. He's, yeah, he's but coming. yeah, but he's gonna get it. He's gonna get it. And yeah, as far sure. as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, like I said, if he's gonna be vice captain, and I'm gonna have a go at Son for not being, mm. if I don't think he's a great captain, I'm gonna have a go at him for not being advised, showing some um, example as well. And he is no different to like Fernandez at the moment. I've mm. got to be honest. I absolutely agree Alex, with what do, everyone's do saying think, about Bentacor. I think Bentacor. Bentacor. Easing Bentacore back into the team because well, no, of his no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think we should be easing back into the team. I think he should be in the team now. Well, I, I, I do. I, I, mean, like I, I think I've said, I've said, grown with him. Start, in he's, my opinion, he's grown, he's grown on me. He is definitely grown on me, Bentacore, and um, and he's and he's, he's shown a day why he's been growing on me, right? Um, and I, 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 um, I've had it more than a year with him now, and um, I'm now seeing why he's he's got the he's got a bit, better mentality than most of these players. Better like mentality than in most of these like players, hands down, he, every he, single day. He always looks yeah. for forward pass. He always looks to get forward. It's not even and just that, Adrian. It's, which, not which, it's not even just that, Adrian. It's not even just that. More than that. His, men, his mentality is there. His mentality is there. He don't like losing. Yeah, he doesn't like losing. He was... he, he's, a, he's, he's a more of a leader than most of the players that we've got that really are, that are leader, so called leaders. Players, which he doesn't do, Bentacore, is when players in in space. And they don't use it. Instead, they'll try a lazy pass or they lay it off. I'm going to stand. I'm screaming. Use the space. Use the space. Move forward. Give this because that that gives the other team something to worry about. Use well, the they're space. Not, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it, Adrian. They ain't got the capabilities to do it. I think we've. I think we made it quite clear right now that they ain't got the time to do it. And I think Andrew's made his mind up on these yes. players anyway. But my point is, at the moment, Madison for me. I, I, if you if you if you put a, um, um, a photo between him and Fernandez at the moment, I couldn't tell who's who's what, what's what. And and even though I've called him a, a, um, a, a, a overall reject, Odegaard, Odegaard is making him look like an absolute joke right now. 
Yeah, I'm not interested in other players. We're discussing the problems of their team. No, no, no. But, uh, you you, you might know, not so be like... interested, but the point is, the problem is, Adrian, we're gonna, we, he's going to be compared to those players. Yeah, he, he will be compared he, to those players. So if we're, gonna, player. if we're going to start, if we're going to start saying these players no, are no, great, no no. But no, no. The point is, in fairness to any players, he isn't back on form, right? Madison isn't oh, back. Yeah, on but form. Oh, oh, listen, why listen, are we making excuses listen, for him? Listen, listen, what? listen for a I, second. I just want to know if it was a risk. He's not back on form, but Basuma's not on form. Salah's not on form. You doggy's not on form. I'm asking about the red card decisions, and you're asking about the form. Sorry, sorry, we've gone off on a tangent. But I'm saying. No, we don't know if all these interconnectivity yeah. things are Adrian, are also a problem why some players are out of form. If Madison is not playing well, but Adrian, not playing well, was it a red card or not? Well, you know, Adrian, got a red card or not? Listen, I, I want to come back to that. I want to come back to that at the end. Dietrich came right. says Madison is technically a flop. Only ten out of thirty-one good games. I want to talk about something that was brilliant today, though, and that was. Um, Oops, sorry, mate. Get off the screen. Um, this man, mm. what a hit! Excellent. What a hit! That thing, right? When's the last time you saw a goalie still standing in the same position after the balls hit the back of the net? Mm. That was yeah. one hell of a strike. It was and a good you know, strike, but I think he just had enough because no one was shooting. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't be honest. I can't be honest. I was watching it. I was there, and it's it was just it was just really it was just like song shoot. Johnson shoot and no one's shooting. It's like Van der Ven just comes there and it's yeah, like there was a, he just four shoots short and then, passes across the penalty area before Son gives it to gives it to VDV to, to, to spank it in the net. You know, what have you not been oh. saying? Go on, go on, stop. No, no, say it, say it, say it. Um, Dan. What have I been saying to everyone on here for the past what two months now? Possibly even coming on three. We take more chances passing in front of our own goal than the other goal. We don't take no chances. We don't get that moment of, do you know what? The box is packed. Have a crack. And we did it a few times today. And you know what? If it goes wide or it don't go on target, fine. Because we weren't going to get it in the box well, anyway. Where it was so play, packed. Take a few chances in front of goal. And we did that today. And that's one thing I've been complaining about for quite a while now. Even Hoybe a shot today. And even, yeah. even he played Boys, well today. Basuma, to be honest with you. Even he, he, he and, uh, to be honest with you, even though he's going to leave in the summer, um, I'd, I'd rather put, put him in, against Newcastle, to be honest with you, and put Bentacore there because I'm so fed up with uh, so fed up with these um, um, Sar. No, Sar, uh, not so much. We are but, a consumer, consumer, we're so for but the league. Madison, I, I, I'm so I'm fed up of him. <laughs> I am fed up of him. Guys, and can I ask look, you a question about Van der Ven? Alex, about Van der Ven, right? I want to ask you something. It's two questions. Number one. Is he the best player in the club? And number no. two, no. All right, you can tell me who you think it is then. And number two, this isn't the first time he's popped up with a winning goal. He did it against Luton Town. Is 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 he not showing us that <clears throat> he is the complete player in the modern era? He can tackle, he can recover, he can header, he can mm -hmm. he can defend, he can drive forward with the ball, and he's got the odd goal in him. Is, is this guy like not exactly what Ange Ball is about? He Tell me, ask me that question a couple of seasons. He hasn't time. got the range of passes. So, 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 so far, Alex, so far, so far. Um, at the moment, it looks it's okay, it's good, right? But okay. talk to me, talk to me in a couple of seasons' time. No, because it's about consistency, bro. And when people compare him to Van Dyke, I'm sorry, no, you can't compare it to Has Van Dyke because this season. Has he not been yeah, consistent? Yeah, okay, but bro, 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 there are, there are players that have been great one season and not doing well the next no, season. I'm just judging him on this season alone, just this season alone. Okay, he looks good. He looks very good this season, yes. But again, again, we've won nothing this season. So, as far as I'm concerned... That's a two. You, you, you need to... No, it's not. It is fair. Because we're going to... If, if we want to start saying no, that this player is really good, I need I need to see this... Because I, he's, made, just... he's made it hard for him next season yeah. now. Alex, he's made, he's made, he's made, hard, he's made a hard job for him this season. Next season. No, so, so, no one's going to talk over me on this one because I don't want to hear what I'm going to say. My point is, right, is that um, it, it, because he's, he's made a very hard job for him next season because now he's going to be up there now. Right? The expectations are up there now, right? Because this season, this season no one really knew about him. Now, next season, right, now you've got to be up there now. And there's no excuses anymore now. 
You know what I mean? Easy to do that. I think. I think he'll do that easy. Him and we'll Vicario. Have to wait and see. Have been... we, have to wait and see. we can only judge on what we see. That. And I personally think, again, it's a personal opinion, Alex. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. But the only thing I can go on fact is so far this season, Vicario and Van der Ven have been our most consistent. Players. Yeah, fair enough. That's a fair get point. And, fair point. And that's all we can go by. Yeah. So I'm not saying that you're going to be wrong. Next season's going to be a very different one for him. But personally, I'll put I, think he's got the, I think he's got the mentality and I, just, I think he's got it all apart from heading the ball. That is his weakest spot, considering how tall he is as well. Yeah, but tall, I really? personally think we have got... I won't judge him at it yet, but we have got a world-class defender to be, if you get what I'm saying. Not yet. No, he's got high Let's put the waist he's, be, he's, just... better than, he's better than Romero, in my opinion. Fair, fair point. Long. You're making a fair point, Dan. Agent, 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 uh, no, agent and Dan, there. just take it, take take this for, uh, for, not, take this, and just one with this at the moment. Don't don't have this a lot of the time with me, saying uh, changing my mind on this. He has, had, he, uh, he has been consistent this season. Right mm. and and Vicario, yeah. The only concern I have for Van de Ven at the moment is next season and his hamstrings because that hamstring is going to pop again. Well, we yeah? about Michael what Owen. No, what will happen? That one is a fact, mate. The way Can he I... plays, he uses his sprint so much. Same as Michael Owen. Same as all the other fast players. I guarantee it. His hamstring will go again and again and well, again. I... You know, I it's, hope you're wrong, Dan. I, I don't. Oh, I hope I'm wrong, but it I, happens I, with all players who rely it. on a my, my two like best he... players this season for Spurs. Go ask the question, Romero and Vicario. And with VDV, I love the player. Who cannot like him? Right. Sometimes he's a bit hesitant on the ball. He doesn't quite know what to do with it, where to lay it off. He hasn't got the range of passing. Romero has a long range. You don't see Van der Van hit a long ball or a side splitting out of Vero long pass he doesn't do that he's a little bit suspect in the air Romero knows straight away if he hasn't got an option he shifts one side or the other actually I think he actually looks more to pass inside in the midfield rather than he does to whoever's out on the right like when Dickie was out there even when Johnson's out there he does seem to if you watch him to me most of his passes are forward central or, or to the left rather than to the right if I was going to be a little bit critical of Romero mixing it up a bit and sometimes when players are open, they're not hit. When we see the space on the wings, the pass doesn't come from their centre-backs and they should take a chance because if you lose it high up the pitch, all your players are behind the ball anyway. So okay. where's this such a big risk? You know, you know what, Adrian? I, just... Adrian I... Go Go I was going to say, today, um, we've continued yet again to not lose a game when a dogie Poro... Van der Ven, Bukhara and Romero start. They yeah. haven't lost one Premier League game when they start. No. The only one they did was against Chelsea, but we know what happened in that game. It's an anomaly. That was a freak. Nine men. We, okay. But when they've started it was what it was. and they've stayed yeah. on the pitch, right? Yeah. <laughs> even, even when we've gone down to 10 men, yeah, we haven't lost with them. Is that not a sign of quality players? The team is very resilient. That's what it's a sign of. The team they across play, the ball are very when resilient. They, when they play, Adrian. And I still think they're, they're lumps of coal that are going to be polished into diamonds. I still think they are diamonds in the making from polished lumps of coal. But they're not they're not they're not yet there yet. We've seen great performances, such mature performances for young players in that team that I've been really impressed with. And I watched successful Spurs teams in the past, and I can see it in them. And and it does excite me even at my age, right? And I think, yeah, we we can go play. We got ad players, but we can go go places with this team, right? They're in a good environment. They all love where they are. They love being at a training ground. They love being at the club. None of them are ever going to want to leave and things like that. All the vibes coming out are saying that I'm not worried it's about. Real Madrid club. step in and say, come come for us, Van der Ven. Well, one thing, Real Madrid are skin, and two, we are not a selling club, right? We're no. not. And, and people say that Kane, Kane and Ericsson were at the end of the contracts, they went, right? The last player we would love to keep that left this club was in 2017, Carl Walker. Prior Let to me that, ask you this question for you, 
Adrian, let me answer this question. 2012 and 2013, when Bale and Modric left the club. Right. We don't but have let, to sell Let me answer this question. We leave, leave Adrian, it. we cool. haven't had any players worthwhile of people hunting down, really. We've had some very good ones. There is only one reason, as far as I'm concerned, that we did not sell Harry Kane two years before or a season before. And that's because Carrie Hayne is too much of a nice person. Any other player who wanted to go places in their life, I'm not saying it's the right way to do it, but if you don't look after yourself, no one else does, would have said, right, do you know what, Levy? Go screw yourself, mate. I ain't playing football. I ain't getting on that pitch. It's and I lay, let me finish. Mm -hmm. And I lay money on it. By the time the season starts, Kane's gone. Yeah. With these players, we don't know how they're going to react if it even comes to it. Real Madrid are not skint. They are run by Spain, for God's sake, yeah? And they're still looking at getting people in like Mbappe and paying £600,000 a bloody week. So don't tell me Real Madrid is skint. They are not. And when someone like Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, or I won't even say Barcelona now, yeah? but Or even PSG comes in and says, I want you, boy. Come and play for me. Are four times your wages, and you will win stuff with us. Any player who's got half a brain on him will say, Bake potato, Spurs. See you later, mate. Bake and they're potato. gone. Well, we'll find this See opinion, you later. Well, and Adrian, the only Adrian, reason on, Harry Adrian, Kane back, did not go. I'm going to back Adrian up here in a minute, but for a different reason, not your reason. It's not because I'm not going to back you up because Madrid is skin. What Levy's done, which is what Levy's good at. He's put these players on long contracts, four or five years. Six years. So we know with Levy, he will dig his heels in. Kane only mm -hmm. had three years left. He said, you're not going anywhere unless someone breaks the bank. Mm -hmm. And you know what? He stayed. So I do think Levy can force... We've got the leverage because Levy set up the mm -hmm. contracts that way. But but I agree with Dan. Mm -hmm. If Madrid, Barca, Bayern come in, of course they're going to want it out. Who wouldn't? But Levy's got the power here because he's got them under long contracts. It's yeah, whether they yeah. down tools, though. It's okay. whether they down if, tools or... I, or get, I get where you're they going refuse to play. From, right? I get where if you're coming they... from. But my point is, right, these players are happy on long contracts, right? One, you know, you, you get players with Son's attitude, just loves the club, doesn't want to leave. This is what they're trying to, like, instill in the players that come, the younger players that come to a club, that aren't just mercenaries. What did Ange say in his presser? What did he turn around and say? I don't want players that want to to Tottenham because they want to play in the Champions League. I want players to come to Tottenham because they want to play for Tottenham. They're right. up for the challenge. Adrian, you're, you're missing one thing here, yeah? Fair enough. Money Go talks. On, money talks. And at the end of the day, money has made people walk over their own bloody mother's True, grave. Yeah? Also, some people have so much comes money to it, from football. It doesn't we don't, it's funny it's not a point. I'm talking place. about players, yeah? <laughs> and when the player yeah. sees that he can go to one of the biggest clubs on the stuff, planet man. that you can pretty much half guarantee will win something, mm. they will do it. And PSG and do have this pool as well with the money and thing, so do Bayern and so do everyone else. Thing that, with the length of this the contract, we've got. Right? Don't fans in the chat, just, just something like, you can sign players on eight-year contracts, but... Because the new rule says, right, that you can only sign for five years. What that rule is, is you can't do what Todd Bowley's done at Chelsea. Exactly. Sign play on, on an eight-year contract and pay that transfer fee up over the eight-year period. So what it is, all your transfer fees now, maximum, have to be paid over a five-year period. It has to be paid in full, right, for PSR and FFP. But that doesn't stop you signing that player for eight years. You can sign him for eight years, 10 years, 20 yeah. years if you want to. But what was the but you've got to pay that transfer fee over a five-year period. Fine. But what was Kane's other problem why he didn't go? First one was because he, he was too weak to make it happen. Kane could have made that happen. Any player can make that happen. His the brother. minute he turns around and says, I'm not going on that pitch, you can knock 10% off his price. Because people was, start thinking... His brother signed Robinson. him up on a long contract and Levy held him And that's too. the next bit. I'm, no. It. No, there was one thing missing out of it. That just shows how crap his brother was at what he did. He didn't have mm -hmm. a buyout clause. I pretty much bet that any decent... Um, what they called... Uh, not coach. Uh, agent. Agent. Agent, yeah. With these six-year contracts, they would say, said, yeah, and here's your buyout clause. If it ain't a number, it's going to be if Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, PSG... 
uh, Barcelona or whatever come looking for you. Well, he's you're not going to have any contracts with buyout clause because he wants to maximise what he can get. Mate, that's crap. Total crap. Yeah, let's get back to let's get back to the game. I want to bring up the third goal and just something I've been harping on. Murray, Murray, your mic is super loud, like really yeah. loud. Loud? Okay, let me lower it. Mm, All right, that's better. That's good. That's okay. Better. I want to get to the third goal, and I've been harping on this, of how many intelligent um, technical players that we have in our team. Um, Poro scored, mm -hmm. but the genius that's Bentecourt. Yeah, that header. Mm -hmm. The intelligence. Yeah. And he did it twice. He did it later after the goal. He did it in the uh, seven, seven minutes. Madison passed to Pentacle, didn't he? Yeah. I think it was, yeah. yeah, Madison. Yeah, Madison made the pass, but the header he directed. He saw right yeah. from the twenty eyes. The yeah. runners scored a cushioned header. A cushioned header. Yeah, yeah. 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 He saw that the runners were, were there, and just the intelligence. Like, yeah. I, I really think Bentico is one of the most intelligent players on our team. There's not that much as there's more, you know, because we got a lot. We got rid of some of the dead wood, right? And I complained about that. Intelligence start with Eric Dyer, but the intelligence. Sorry for the microphone, um, megaphone guys, but the intelligence of Bentacor, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what I'm, this is when I look at the other team, City, Bernardo Silva, the KDBs, right? The intelligence, right? You look at uh, at, at, at Real Madrid, you look the good teams, right? They have the technical players who are also intelligent, and what Bentacor mm -hmm. did, oh, it was just pure. Intelligence uh, that he did at, with technical skill, and it was a beautiful third goal. That was my favorite goal uh, today, even more than the rock shot. By Mari, what I like about him, it, like when he well, comes on as a sub, a lot of subs. Many like, feet. Yeah, many exactly, exactly. A lot of subs when they come on, right? They can Murray. like look for the ball, search for the ball, and all that. He's got such so intelligent so awareness, so right? He's got yeah. such intelligent awareness to get into the game straight away. Straight away. Make, sound like a chef, Murray. Magnifique. <laughs> no, but... It, and, and he made such an impact. Murray's and I think he also did as well, actually, when he came on. I like the salsa, but he's made a glass. Yeah, Bentico, that was, that was, that was beautiful. That, that's the goals I like to see. That gets me excited. I'm like, oh, that was gorgeous. Beautiful. Many feet. That was... Intelligence too, like that's what we need. More intelligent players, technical players on our squad, on our team. This is how you win trophies when you have those type of players. Mm -hmm. That's what we complain about when we lose to the Rochelle Ferro and all these <laughs> past years when we lost. Like, we we didn't have that intelligence. Murray, Murray, yeah. is it time? Is it time we start Benton Core now? Is it time we start him in matches? <laughs> yes. We've got New, New, Newcastle away is the next game. Is it? Is it time? That we start Benton Core mm. because of the way Basuma's playing, yeah. I, I've been saying it. And then who do right. you start in the six, Pape Sar or Hoybier? So, I, I think it comes from the bench. I'll put Sar, mm. I would put I would put Sar. I would go with see the thing with me. Yeah, Sar, I, Sar, wasn't, Sar wasn't great today, was he? I mean, he got no, he wasn't, but well. you've got to give him he's oh, young, you've got to give him more said, experience and have more game I time. Said, Madison, Lo Celso and Bentecourt. That's what I said last week. That's, that's what I said last week. But they didn't do that. Because for me, I think Madison, like Basuma needs to be, be tested, like challenged, right? To be like, hey, you're not automatically going to start. But I know that's, that's crazy talk. So Bentecourt, Sar, and Madison. Benton Court you... played number six for Juventus for about four years, and uh, three of those years he won stuff and played nearly every single game. Now, I get he's not the muscle side we need there, but one thing he definitely is, he's a good DM, he can tackle the ball, and he's also a deep-line playmaker to get yeah. that ball and get you the perfect ball forward. That exactly. is exactly how I watched him play at Juventus for nearly four years. And at the moment... If we just want muscle sitting there, I think Hoiberg is our best option. If we want where we can get a little bit of both, probably more on the playability side as such, Benton Core goes there. He did not play centre mid for Juventus. Never. He played He played in the DM role as a deep-line playmaker. 
and done the tea, done the DM quite covered quite well. Well, I in Italy, did... in Italy, Romero used to step in midfield, so he could quite easily no, do he that. Didn't. He's not no, going to get not. He's not no, he get... did not. He played DM two or three times for Atalanta. The rest of it, he was a centre back all the time. Uh, what? Uh, uh, what? what Romero? Yeah, Romero. He played at Atalanta he for a whole in season. In, not put... in, no, in a did. back three. In a back three, he did. He used to step yeah, in the that's midfield. not stepping in midfield. He always stayed back, and about three games for Atalanta, he went DM. That's why he was uh, defender of the season in Italy. He never used to go central mid. Never. No, I said he used um, to step into midfield, not play in midfield. Well, then, if you're yeah, stepping into midfield, into midfield, what are you doing there? He stepped into midfield. In fact, he, uh, do you know, I saw Romero twice. As he, for us. he scored four goals this season for us. He's got four goals. He gets forward. Um, I thought you champion. meant he played in that position, so I misunderstood no, 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 you. Sorry. No, no. no, no, no. A, 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 a user got a super chat. He says, "What the hell is going on with Bis? We did discuss it earlier. A user, he's garbage. Re rewind. Well, garbage <laughs> is a bit harsh. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'll take that he's back. Not, he's, he's, no, no, he's, no, no, he's, not, he's not playing good. He's not playing good. Form. He's out of sorts. He's, not he's out of sorts. He's, he's been out of sorts for four months, which is which is which is a problem. I want to. I wanted to ask. I mean, what has he contributed this season, right? He's he's had three suspensions more than any other player. He's gone away at Amali, a manager wouldn't pick him. He's come here. Now, we all see him at Brighton. We all see him in the first 10 games. And we fans were debating, oh, who's man of the match? Madison or Pissoum? Madison or Pissoum? But if he's not going to be consistent, this is why I can understand when I see when Angie's like rumoured to be, probably smoke and mirrors, after a Conor Gallagher who I don't want, right? Oh, but, Conor Gallagher, but, my God. I'm yeah, really I know, wrong. I know. But it really tells wrong, you that he wants he wants to bring in a dynamic, energetic, box-to-box -box type midfielder because we haven't got the legs yeah, in there. Yeah, 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 but, but Adrian, 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 if sure. you're going to spend the English tax fee yeah. on Conor Gallagher, for the same price, you can land some top players that have got the energy. Exactly. You can land them. Like, if we go and buy Conor Gallagher, that is such a club signing. I'm mm. not buying this is a... Do you know, I speak to Chelsea fans, I'm and actually wrong. watched a bit of Chelsea. He's nothing special, man. There's no. No, he, doesn't, he doesn't change our midfield. We could get Morgan Gibbs-White for the same money, and I'd rather take him, right? If not, I, I, like bird, Edison, I like Edison at Atalanta. Right, he would do a good job. I'm sure there's others. I've got a list of names. Conor Gallagher has a lot of he has a lot of touches of the ball in the yeah. opposition box, and he has got he has got the odd goal in him. But yeah, and, me, he, and he can't hit a barn door either, can he? In the League right. Cup final, like we, we, and, we, we, and we need midfielders that can chip in with goals. And you know, I've been banging on about that lack of goal. Everyone, everyone on this show, everyone on this show in the comments every week when we talk about the number six, mm. all you ever hear is, "Look at Rodri at Man City." Look at Declan Rice at Arsenal. So that is the kind of player we need for our way of playing. Yeah. That's not Conor Gallagher. Conor no. Gallagher is not that player. So if we sign him, it doesn't make sense. No fan, no fan I know is saying replace the six with Conor Gallagher. I don't know one Spurs fan that has said the number six replacement should be Conor Gallagher. But the thing That's, is, well, he's box to box anyway, isn't he? He's not even a DM. He's not even a proper DM. He's box no. to box. He's, another, he's like he's another, he's, another, he's another number eight. We've already got five of them. But mm -hmm. Ange, wherever he's played, mostly in his system still, mostly in his system, is two eights and a ten. He doesn't play with a six. And then I'd have to ask your yeah, bloody your needs first to man, when you ask them what they what what do they mean out of a six? We can all say Rodri's the best in the world as a number six, but they ain't, if there ain't no one out there like him, you know, or another Rice out there. What do you want? I mean, to me, I, I would like a defensive line midfielder. I'm not the modern number six who sort of picks the ball up from the back. Nobody, four, nobody, in, the comments, nobody in the comments wants Gallagher, right? Normally the comments, yeah. there's an argument or they disagree. Really Everyone, there's not one person here saying, yeah, 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 yeah Gallagher. Not one. <laughs> he plays for England the other day. Yeah, fine. If you can do a job for England under, under a... Boring yeah, but so did Phillips play for England as well. Look how yeah, cracking he, he is. He's struggling for form at West Ham. Harry Maguire, Harry Maguire plays for England. Enough said. Well, that's no, that's no. It. Do you know England what? No, still, let me, back I'm going to defend Harry Maguire there, yeah, quickly. No, do he's a do very good defender. Man, don't do it. If you You're play doing so well, don't do it. Don't defend him. No, 
Well, <laughs> tell me when he plays bad for England. Maybe a moment he has done, but right. for England, right. he's should been we, solid. We start, would you, do you want to see Harry Maguire at Spurs then? <laughs> for the way no. we play, not a chance in hell. I feel I can't <laughs> run. Conversation over. <laughs> I just don't think he's as bad as people make out. But if you want to push him up high, he can barely run, let alone walk. But he's quite a solid defender. He's not, but he's not Ange Ball, is he? No, not at all. I, no. I wasn't saying I want him at Spurs. I was just defending <laughs> him because I don't think he's as bad as people make out. So so there's one player that came on today and he pretty much put in the same kind of performance he did when he came on against West Ham. Kulazewski. Now, mm. if there's one man... From day one, that called him a reject. It was Mr. Box Office. Now he's he's converted from and calling Dietrich. Benson Court a reject, right? And Dietrich. But Alex doesn't call Benton Court a reject anymore. Alex, is Kulu still a reject? Well, he's growing on me. Uh, I have really? to say that he he, uh, I, I, uh, he hasn't fully got me um, on board. But I I I will say this: that uh, I've learned a lot more with him. Because I've had more than a year with him now, and I think I think now there's a lot there that Alex, I see. Kuliszewski, Kuliszewski, we're talking about. Oh, Kuliszewski, no, no, so, no, Kuliszewski, no, Kuliszewski, no, 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 um, no. He, he's just he, he, he's he's he, no. Sorry, he, he he's really really disappointing me now. He, he's really getting on my nerves. Now he did because, nothing when uh, he came on, basically. Because because the thing is though, he, I mean. People will say that he could play, do this, he could do that, he can do this, he can do this. Well, you've got to show yourself and make yourself known then. You know what I mean? Mm. You've, got to, you've got to show yourself against West Ham when he came on after Madison came off. That was your opportunity. Did nothing. Today, he got in so many good positions and he just messed up all the time. And this is Forrest. I think he's just not consistent John. enough. He, and the thing is, though, Sometimes, again, mm. I'm, I'm fed up of hearing, oh, players need to get used to the system. Well, make the system work for you. That's the thing. If mm. you're a great player, you make the system work for you. Mm. And he's not doing it. He's, he's giving all the excuses in the world. He, could, he actually can play up front if he really wanted to as well. He's got the yeah. body to do it. Yeah. He doesn't need to rush and he doesn't have to have the pace for it. He, could, he actually he's, could play up front. He's got, we've seen it from him and it's... Uh... We all want to see, like, is a debut season form when he was getting the goals and the assists, right? The talent is definitely there. He's got so many good attributes. I am a big fan, but, you know, he's got to earn his place in the team. If, like, like Basuma and all that, if these, we've had so many players that are, that are out of sorts, and yet we're still winning games. So there's something about this side, the resilience and all that's good, because somehow we're still winning games. You know, and and if we're fourth in the league, we can't be that bad a team. Although we know there are holes in this squad, we know there are holes in this squad, right? Without doubt, you know. But with Kulu, he he's turning a bit of an enigma, and like he doesn't deserve to be in the team. And I'm a big fan because I think he's got he's got so many attributes. He's got such a you know a skill set, and he's only 23 as well. So don't forget that, right? Young players do have dips in form and all that, but he doesn't deserve a place in the team. I don't think that's an excuse. I don't think with that. I don't think with that. I don't think that's an excuse. I think he's not a kid, and I'm sorry. Yes, well, he can improve. Said, well, he can improve my guy is 24 years of age. But yeah, but, yeah, but said, I'm sorry, that's on. an excuse. That's no, an excuse. You've got to be He has done out of holes, and he's good. And his stats are very good even now. Oh, I don't care age. about his stats. His stats are... Right. That's, that's oh, like we don't know what's in. Kulazewski. Kulazewski. Oh. You no, know, I can't do these stats who, again. Who got, oh, sorry, no. away, who got us over the line away to Luton when we were down to 10 men? That's Luton. That is Luton. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. What are we doing talking yeah. about here? Sorry. Luton, I'm sorry. Luton. Luton. Man United yeah. Look at the teams that have struggled to beat Luke. Don't dismiss any team in this Premier League. I mean, it's this. Oh, you're you're saying this again. This is, a, this is again. It's a, this season I'm again. Sorry, it's just, it's, you base it on this season. This season. Ooh, He's had best. two, three seasons. Two, three seasons. George, George and the Ben just won't have a him, and he's been injured right for a year. What does that say to you, Adrian? Adrian, 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 I got to say, the credit that Kulu had from the six months, have been run out. Up, yeah? Get Deli Ali back then. Look, I Get Deli Ali back. I said, I, said it, I, said it, I said it in October. 
I said he doesn't deserve to be in this fight. And I got crucified. I said, guys, I said, Kubu is a fantasy footballer. At best, at best, he could challenge for the 10 position or the bench or or start whatever. Uh, Sorry, my phone. Um, Off the bench, but on the wing, it's not him. Today he came in like last week. It was just like, oh, man, we got a chance. Like, it is, yeah, Mm -hmm. he has so regressed. It's not funny. The problem is he processes so slow. Like, it's just, he doesn't work for, it almost like he doesn't work for Ange Ball in the way. Like, he processes. Mari, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Um, By the way, Dietrich's big up for Super Chat. He says, Ange has never played with the number six because he's never coached in a big league with top players, which is what Dan said earlier about he needs to adjust, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Murray. Bang on Dietrich. Bang on Dietrich, says Dan. Murray, yep. what you just said 100%. there, credit in the bank system, Kulizewski under Conte, the first four months, was banging. The second season, he wasn't quite <clears throat> as good, but nobody was other than Kane. If we're going to really be honest, the last season mm-hmm. only Kane stood out. This season, fresh start, new system. Is, is Kulu, guys, in your opinion, I, I know I've heard Dan say in the past he's better as the 10, but even as a 10 in this system, is Kulu good enough for the way we play? Because I remember after the Nottingham Forest game where we won 2-0 and Kulu scored the second goal, he said when he got interviewed, this is the kind of football I love. This is best suited to me. This is how I was raised to play. This is how I was coached. At other, you know, This is the way I want to mm. play. This is the way I know. And then he also said, I don't mind playing in the 10, you know, I kind of prefer it. That's how I, that's how I use, that's where I used to play. But we're not seeing it. It's, it's almost like when he said, we lost against Chelsea 4-1. We lost the game, but we won in life. But then we went away to Fulham and lost 3-0. We didn't win in life then, did we? So is he maybe saying things that he means it, but he's not showing it? It's like me saying, it's like me being a manager and saying, I want to win the Premier League, but I don't ever do it. Is Kulu maybe just not being able to fulfill what he's saying? The, because this because he's just not at the level of what we want. There's the bark, but I'm not seeing the bite. Mm. Like, yeah. Where well, I'm yeah. from in New York, we say, you all talk, but no backup. Yeah. So you're doing the talk, but I'm not seeing it. And the thing is, even coming from the bench, he's been... Out of all the subs, the last two games, he's been horrible. So I don't know if it's mentally. Remember me, Iggy, we talked about this. We had a transfer show. This is when I had my channel uh, a couple of years ago. Like, you know, Kulu is a, he is a, a psych, not a psychology player. He's a, a he's a, a, a player that mentally he has to be right. He has to be good, right? Mentally that right. sounds like every other player he's, out there. He's a, he's a confident player. <laughs> Like, you know, at Juventus, he was really like a confidence player. He had to get confidence. And so now that he's come off the bench, I think his confidence has lessened. But but Ange has to do what he has to do. He, he's not playing well starting. He, he, he's just not. Especially yeah, but the- why is he not playing well? Because we're playing him in the wrong position and we have done for nearly, what, two and a half years. He's not a right winger. But even when he's come in from the you're making excuses right? for him now. No, he's let me, let me finish it then. I'll give you the reason. Well, he's I'm been... sorry, you can't expect a goalkeeper to be a good striker. He is not a winger. And when? You when was he against West Ham? When he was playing in the middle then, Dan? If you let me finish, I can't answer for free. One at a time, one at a time, one at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Thank you. He's come so, in. On the right-hand side... Juventus noticed it was not his strong point. So they dropped him and they brought in Chiesa. And then they, after about eight games, they needed it. They put him as an attacking midfield central on a false nine. And Ronaldo could not kiss him big enough, yeah? Because him and Ronaldo linked up lovely when they played in Champions League and everything. When he plays for Sweden, he plays number 10, out and out. If you keep playing someone in the wrong position, you ain't going to get the best out of them. And then for 15 minutes or a game here or there where he's trying so hard to adapt there, He now has to get back to his usual position. It ain't going to click just like that. You keep playing a player out of pace. You're not place. You're not going to get the best of them. And we don't play him to his potential. 
He played as a false nine at Juventus or an attacking midfield central, and he does it for Sweden every game. But He's Werner... Left-footed, and we add him on the right. Just rebuttal to this. Okay, just Jen, rebuttal fine. To this. And I, I get the argument Spurs fans give him a go on the left or play him as a number 10, that. right? Is Werner right-footed or left-footed? Left. And he plays on the left. Can, yeah. can, I, can I just rebuttal That's... to this? Because Dan's, Dan's making excuses for him, yeah? Mm. Right? What was he doing against West Ham when he played in the middle of West Ham? At half, when long, he came on for, for okay. Madison at no, half time. I get time. It. I get that. How long was he there for? How long was he yeah, there for? It doesn't matter, Dan. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Sorry. Of course it does. You get, no, it no, doesn't matter, Dan. No, sorry. No, no, so, no, Dan, you can't, you can't make excuses for him. Listen, if you've got I, that no, little window... I give you a reason. You, you, no, you, it's not you, excuse, But you're making, it's the, you're making excuses for him. The, no, the point I'm making is, if you're making... you're making, He's got that little window. He's got that little window, right, to say, here you go. There you go. There you go. There's your opportunity. He did absolutely nothing. Can I go next? I have to break my thoughts just quickly. Can I go just quickly? Perfect, mate. Yeah, you. I hope everyone's uh, good evening, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. Oh, cool. uh, first of all, uh, Dan, when you say he's not a winker, when he started on the Conte, he used to play on the wing. So he showed that he's good enough mm-hmm. to play on the wing, but he's just. And then they diverted him to the middle and he played 10 times better, didn't they? I mean, let, let Dietrich finish, 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 finish your points. Yeah. Finish okay. your points. He showed his first, no, first like half a season that he was good enough on the wing. Then he showed once again that he's so inconsistent. That's why you saw them. So he's not good enough too for us. Once mm-hmm. again, Levy mismanaging the money on, and wasting well. It, it was what three five million on Kulu. What a waste of money. And then people want to say, "Oh, we want to." And then Ange thinks we're going to ch- um, title challenge next season with a player like him and Sar and Yudogi, who are absolutely crap. Well, he never said he's going to keep Kulu. Ange never said he's going to keep Kulu. Oh uh, no 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 no! He did on the um, Emir go go search. Mm. He is a big fan of Kulu. He always gives him praise every fucking time. Don't don't you think? Yeah, but a lot of fans say that Ange praises players to keep them on board. But this summer we'll find out. No no, but you see yeah, Johnson. No, but you see Johnson. No, but the difference. Ange is been ruthless. He's been ruthless no. everywhere he's been. But Johnson, but Johnson, at least he told him he didn't justify his uh, price tag yet. So at least he shows a bit of ruthlessness under with other players. Only Kulu, I don't know why he always rates him in the media. I have no clue with this one. Mm. Well, but, he, he 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 rates he rates all our players in the media because he wants to keep them on board. Is the argument mm. I hear? That's what that, yeah. you know. Because Andrew yeah, like doesn't say or Marino, he's not going to chuck him under a bus. He tries no, to keep him on board. No, but you don't throw under a bus. You don't just give praise to someone that's been crap. You just say like he's struggling. He needs to perform better. That's it. Not yeah, to but always. And you also said that. Uh, Werner's great in one of his press conferences. Yeah, but that's okay. But that's why I don't want to see it. This, this is of... just this is cementing some politics. We know managers look, managers what they say in private, you know, to the public, right? And what they think behind okay, the scenes. Let me ask you, totally okay, uh, he will have a clear out. Mark my words. Okay, let me ask you right? this. Although, although I'm, I've been a good Kulu fan, right? Look, he doesn't deserve to be in the team. And if Ange, and if Ange thinks he doesn't deserve to be in the squad, he will sell him. Okay, let me ask you this question. How would you, feel, how would you feel as a player if the Madrid says you've been playing well, playing well, then he sells you in the summer? And then the whole squad looks at it and says, what the fuck? And Amiya, you say he's been good, but now you sell him and thinking that well, he wasn't good enough. Well, 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 there's, two, there's, two, there's, 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 there's two ways that works. One, all the other players think, shit, this guy's serious. We better up our game. Or <laughs> two, yeah. they lose trust in the manager. They say, do you know what, man? We don't believe Okay, which say. one do you think two ways. Happen? Which one? Which one do you think is going to happen? I don't know, Dietrich. I actually don't I know. I think it's number two. Or... <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I've said to everyone: for yeah. me, with Ange and this team, I'm going to wait and see what we do this summer, and that will be my final decision on what, what, where I see this going. And he's, I he's told you, I one more thing. One more thing. But there's have, still room for more. like ten new players. Yeah. One more. Because... One more thing. I told you guys about Papisar. He is just a runner. He's just like Spinning Gonzalez in the Looney Tunes. Just runs, 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 runs. I does fuck all, all game. Sell this guy before it's too late. Trust me, mm-hmm. I'm not lying. In two mm-hmm. years' time, we're going to come back and everyone's going to say, sorry, it's not good enough. Just wait and see. Remember what I said. At the moment, I can't agree with that one, mate. Look with Sar. ceiling. Sorry. Just wait and see. In two years, everyone's going to go back and say, oh, Dietrich, you're right. Sorry, it's not that good. A just 20-year-old. A 20-year-old with a very high ceiling. And 20 not sure what his final position will be. For your, that can't pass. 
But twenty euro they no, can't pass. I so. They can't shoot. So uh, they can't. Like they can't be the press. That is not good enough. What is? Uh, what is had? What is he good at? Name me three qualities he has except running. Three. Um, guys, I'm just going to bring in someone. Uh, he's been in the chat and he's been messaging me saying, Stel, you say things that are controversial. I disagree. I want to say my bit. And I said, all right, no worries. This is not an echo chamber. I've always told people, if you want to come and debate, come and debate. So listen, let's show, let's show some respect to him because it takes balls to come on with a camera on. I think he's, you look like you're a young, young lad. Is it Charlie? Yes, that's Charlie, mate. Hello, mate. Welcome How to the you? show. Thanks so yeah, we're, right. we're, we're having the usual weekly Spurs debate. I guess you watch us quite often. I do, I do. I really enjoy watching you, but some things you say, I think, why not debate Far away. Because... Far away. You know what I mean? So, the, the agenda the against... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the agenda against Werner and Johnson, I think that's pretty unfair, especially on like the way they've been playing the last five games, because you put a lot of you put a lot of negativity against them when they do bad, but when they do right, you don't you don't showcase it in in your posts. That's really what I don't get. So, what what what's like? What's your reasoning about that? For me, <clears throat> top four, I've seen it. You're you're you're. you're I'm just going to assume you're a lot younger than me, Charlie. Okay, um, <laughs> I've 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 seen. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> oh, you're bald. You're bald. Of course, he looks younger than you. Beatrix, let's not go down that road because no. I want Charlie and I don't want to be respectful. He's on, right? Because if you, because if you, because if, if I lay into you, it just gets messy, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Charlie's gone on mute. That's that's okay. That's okay. Beatrix speaks and the guy leaves the show. That's what I mean. Like, <laughs> for me, for me. Sorry, guys. One second. That's all right, Charlie. For me, I've seen this picture this story many, many, many times. Top four means nothing to me. I'm past the point of top four. When I was younger, mm. yeah, Champions League, yeah, top four. I was buzzing. I was excited. I've seen it so many times now under Redknapp, under Poch, under Conte, and we're going to get it under this manager. Top four means nothing to me, Charlie. I've seen it a thousand times before. What means a lot to me is winning silverware. Because um, mm. I've experienced that. I know what it feels like. I know what a bus parade looks like. I know what the high road being blocked and People that you haven't seen come out, granddads, grandmothers, grand everyone comes out. I want that back. And for me, if we're going to achieve that, we need to beat the best teams in the land because they're the teams we're going to play in semi-finals and finals. They're the teams we're going to have to compete with for league titles. So at the moment, Liverpool, Man City, Arsenal. Do I think Timo Werner, Brennan Johnson are of the quality, the calibre to allow us to compete against those teams? with the front free system that we play, not in a million years. And the reason I don't think they are is because, one, they don't have enough goals in them. Yes, I know Johnson's found a bit of a streak recently, but in general, I don't think Kulu, Johnson, Werner, Richie, Veliz, Solomon, any of these players have got enough Emerson. goals in them. <laughs> Emerson. But also, a front free needs to create. There's no creativity in them. They're one-trick ponies. Get to the byline, smash it into the penalty box, either a tap-in or an own goal. If if I saw them beat a man, beat another man, curl one top bins, like, like I saw Van de Ven today, smash it top bins, or actually take on a man like Harry Kane used to do and then slot it into the bottom corner, or 1v1, they're all terrible other than Sutton. If I saw that, Charlie, I'd agree with you, but I don't see any of that with them. And I don't see how we go forward and compete at the highest level. Does that make sense? Well, I think it makes sense, but Johnson has only been in the team for a year. He's a young player. He still has to involve. It's Andrew's first season. So this is not everything that we are seeing. So about the front three, yes, Johnson is not playing his best. Yes, Werner's not playing his best. But as you saw today, Werner is taking on his man more than he used to do. Johnson is taking on his man more than he used to do. All of these things that... They're, used, they're getting better under range. And I think if we just give them time, give Johnson a year, he will be really good for Tottenham. Charlie, he will can, really... Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. I have a question for you, brother. You say Johnson is still young, but he still has he has three years of prem experience. How can you be young if you have three years? Well, he may have three years of prem experience, but he was the main man at his team. Now he isn't the main man anymore, plays in a different position. 
he used to play striker. He doesn't play striker anymore. Now he's more plays on the wing. He has to assist on. It's more of a way, it's a different system. And to come into a new system of Ange, especially for the whole Premier League, it's it's pretty hard, especially since the club was in such rubbles uh, after after Conte left. But if you Van, see, Van, it, hold on, Van de Ven is a young player as well. Yeah, he's coming to this system. Look what you get. Why is he suddenly settled that? And a he's, different league. Yeah, and that, and Vicario similar. The, the, for me, for me, Brennan Johnson, I don't think he's awful, right? I think no, Team of Werner is... Uh, if I get into Team of Werner, I'm going to end up screaming and shouting. Mm. Brennan Johnson, <laughs> I don't see him becoming the level of what I see the competition. I'm talking about Saka, Foden, Salah, exactly. Mane. That's the level. that Because Kane and Son were at that level. Brennan Johnson, for me... <laughs> I've seen enough to know he's not going to get to that level. As for Timo Werner, I don't know if you know this, in the last four years, the most amount of goals he's ever scored in a season is nine. At Spurs, he's on track to be on about four or five. So he doesn't have the goals in him anymore. And he's, and he's proven that for five years at different clubs in attacking systems. So with Werner, Mane, Salah, Firmino, they used to get between 15 to 20 goals per year and 10 assists each. That, mm. That's the kind of team that wins trophies. Yep. Timo's not even near that. <clears throat> and, 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 and I can't be patient with Timo because one, he's experienced. Two, he's played in the Premier League. And three, he's 29, Charlie. So yeah, Johnson, yeah. maybe you've got an argument. Look, Johnson, maybe you've yeah. got an argument. Maybe I can say, do you know what? Charlie might have a point. But Timo, Charlie, no way. No way. Well, I, 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 Charlie, Charlie, just something for you. Just, just a fact. When we talk about players, because this is one thing that really exasperates me with the squad, because I deal in a lot of facts, right? No, you don't. Since 1992, <laughs> right? Since 1992, it has taken 82 goals for a team to win the Premier League. In the last 10 seasons, it's taken 87 because Man City scored 101, 106 and all that. So, like, I'm agreeing with Stel. I... I'm listen, I'm seeing a bit more in Johnson and thinking. I've heard yeah, this stat every but, week, Adrian Don. I hear the same I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry, <laughs> but, but Charlie might not know it, you see. And it's for those that don't know. The yeah, 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 yeah. Fair so, fair so fair. like, obviously, Me? yeah, I, I'm going to give Johnson grace because he's got a high ceiling. I see a few things to down him that I liked. I really like what he was doing with the ball, right? When he was on the ball and he got it, right? I really liked it. He's got a high ceiling, but my critique has always been on him, like, Paying 40, 47 mil for a player, a young player of add-ons, he should be oven ready. He's not. And we've got too many non-oven ready players in the team that need to grow. Werner, as Stel said, total agreement, right? At his age, unless he's a real late mature, mature player like an Ian Wright, he is not going to get any better. And he's not going to score goals. And your wide players, if we're talking about leagues like Andrew's saying, right? Son will get us 20 goals under an end system. He got the golden boot with 17 or something like that. He'll get that, right? But Werner and Johnson, all right, Johnson's got five goals and seven assists, which is very which is very impressive for a young kid. So, yeah, all good. As Stel was pointed out in previous programs, yeah, but he hasn't done it against a big team like Sonny has. So he's got to do that. He's got to add that to his game. And then, and then I'll think if he does, then I'll think, ah, oh, We've got a young player here who's got even more potential than I thought. Werner, I, I wouldn't buy him in the summer because I want to bring in a proven. I don't care if a winger's flashy, can beat a man 12 times, double up, go and, go and kiss the ball and nod it in the head, right? I don't care. I want a forwards that can score goals. That's what they're in the team for. Score. We will never win a Premier League. Right, we might nick a cup. You can nick a cup. It's only six games, bit of luck and a run. You can nick a cup. We'll never, which is what I want. To, I want to win a league. We're never going to win a league with Werner in our team. That's okay. Right. We will never okay. win a Werner, league. Right? We will never win. Can I just make a point now? Let's keep it short and sweet with this one, mate. Charlie, yeah, then, then, then we'll let Charlie what? speak back. We'll let Charlie speak back. Charlie, I think you've actually made some good points there. Yeah. The only problem I have with Johnson, but I'll cut in the slack that you say because you're right. He is still young. Even though he's got three years pre Premier League experience, that's what I put on him. But I have seen flashes, moments where he's good. But my problem with Johnson is I can only name two games all season that he started where he's had at least 60 minutes solid. He usually 
He's patchy. Five minutes here, great a score, pass, disappears for the whole game. Now, Werner, I think on the ball and having the bottle to go forward and everything is a lot better than Johnson because Johnson has not got guts on him. Maybe once or twice he'll try it. Mm. But the problem is with Werner, mate, he, he just can't finish come love nor money and his pass ain't great either. But I think, but everything else you said, I totally get the point you're getting at, mate. So you made some solid points. That's my bit. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I can't stay too long because, I told stuff so I have to get my dinner. Um but uh um, um big up Charlie. Uh, uh first time um streaming with you. Uh thank you for joining the show. Um Thanks, I, I, I will say this. When it comes to Johnson, and we gotta be real here, um Johnson will be on our on our team next year. Yeah. First of all, because no one's gonna buy him. <laughs> but no, I wasn't no one, but you know, are going to pay the price that we paid for him. So how does his future look? You know, he's you know, he's gonna tap in, he's gonna assist here and there. Um he is for the four competitions that we're gonna be, he's gonna be needed for for the squad. He's gonna be needed for he's gonna be needed for the squad. The only question is now is really goes to the summer. Are we going to sign a winger that is better than him? Hopefully we do. Mm. Hopefully we do. And Johnson, like I said, he's going to be on the club so he can come from the bench. On the other side with Timo Werner, um, it is just I, I just hope someone said this on the other Charlie said. Maybe we're renting him out like Dan Juma. You know, we didn't end up signing Dan Juma. And so, you know, because Timo, even today, when I'm like, okay, like he was, like he, he kicked what, what we could call in the NFL field goal. He was near, it didn't even get an attempt on, on the keeper. He just kicked another field goal. Like it was out in the stands. For, for, for me, it's just save that 15 mils. Save that 20 mil and get a proper winger or a striker, right? If we're gonna put some back on the left, then get a pay for a striker. You know, if we really want to challenge him, and just saying that next season it was a challenge challenge for the Premier League, then we must do that. We cannot have Timo and Johnson both starting if we want to if we're serious about challenging. Now, Johnson, I would concede, Johnson could be on the squad, come from the bench, okay. But Timo, no, no. We, we just just can't. It's wasted money. That's our problem. Like, we, we, we have wasted money. Like, Timo's going to turn 28. Like, like, Larry, let me ask Charlie a question. Charlie, let me ask you a question, right? Yeah. What, 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 what do you see in Timo Werner? That makes you think we can challenge for a league title with him. What what do you see that makes you think this guy can show us what we're seeing from the wide players at Man City, Liverpool, and Arsenal? Okay, well guys, first things first. Yeah, it's Andrew's first season. Literally, we haven't even gotten to his second season yet. To go for a title is already a very big ch uh, thing. To and Timo is a squad player. He will be on the bench. He'll just come on at the 80th minute, 70th minute. He'll do something for the team. And what Dexter said about, yeah, the fan defenders just come in, that kind of stuff. Some people need longer term to take notes in a new system. Not every player is the same. Like, like Van der Fenn is just special. He's, he's magical. Mm -hmm. Vicario is magical. But for some players, it just takes more time to get in. But Charlie, Charlie, you haven't answered my question. Right, my oh, question sorry, was, sorry. That's okay. My question was, what do you see in Timo Werner that makes you believe this guy can be part of a team who wants to win a league. And the reason I say win a league is because this is what Ange has said. wants to win the league. So when you look at the wide players at, at Arsenal, like Saka, Foden, uh, Salah, they, they, they're the wide players of, of the rivals we're going to have to beat to win a league. What do you see in Timo Werner that makes you think, yeah? Well, uh, he isn't he isn't league winning worthy, but he is a squad player. He, he doesn't deserve it, but to have him on the bench, I think, is good enough because Saka and Foden are 100 million plus. I mean, like, do we really have that money to spend on? So, so, let, like me ask, so let me ask, let me, let me ask you that. Let me ask you this question then. If you've just said to me he's not 
Premier League level challenging, why do you want him in the squad? Because if we get an injury to one of these players, he's going to be the replacement. So surely you would want better than him in the squad. Like, like you look, I'll give an example. Arsenal are struggling in a game. Arsenal needs something to happen. On comes Trossard. Trossard. Goals. Goals. One-on-one -on -one with the goalie. He lifted it over the Brighton goalie. It was a brilliant finish. If you don't think Werner is of that level, do you really want him in the squad, Charlie? Like, would you really want him to be in the squad? I think one more season, yes, because I think we could make a bit of money on him. If he just has a good season, then, then I would like it. But to be honest, we do need another player. But <clears> just to have him for one more season, I think if you buy him for 16 million, you could sell him for 24 million easily. You could get some, you could get some money on him. Which we could Who, use for gonna, so, 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 what you're saying to me is then buy him so we can make money, not buy him to improve our chances of challenging for a league title. This is about money but for we you can, then. No, it's He's, not really. But, mm, go, but that was your argument, it, though. You're, you're, but that was your argument. Your argument was buy him because we can so, sell him for more later. So, to you, Charlie, he's an evolution squad member like we've done before with Sissoko, who served us well. Right, then he had to go when we, when we team got better. But we won nothing. With well, okay, fair enough, Stan. But that's but, but I me mean, like you know, it's, he's an evolution squad player to me, right? He's not, he's not a long term success player. So then he's going to be way down. He'd be way down my pecking order. Not that there isn't room for him in a squad of twenty five if he's one. <laughs> if he's the twentieth player or twenty first player. We've got to have a squad. Uh, it's never been. It's never going to be a squad that's going to like please every Spurs fan out there, right? So, but what I don't want to. Well, well, well Adrian, it's not a winning squad. It doesn't affect the winning squad. It's not to get in. So what I don't want to do is twelve or fifteen million on him still, and that stops us getting another player in because we've spent twelve or fifteen million pound on him. I'm not a Werner well, fan. Oh. Because he doesn't score goals. That's that's he, he's not a, he's not a natural that's, finisher. That's my that's my argument. By the way, Charlie, he's an assist king. So you know, Charlie, just so you know, I'm not being tough on you. I'm just, I, I, no. I like to challenge the opinion, right? That's the mm. whole point of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a football talk. Yeah, but is, 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 is an assist king what we need from a front three? Because when I look at front threes in the modern game, I even saw it at Barcelona when Pep did it. The front three, all three of them need to have goals in them. Mm. If they right. haven't got goals in them, it is a problem. All right. Quick, the way I'm quick one for you. Go on, you, mate. Go on, Charlie. Go on, mate. The way Ange plays, midfielders had to score. It's more of a whole team score. The front three doesn't say everything because the way Ange plays, you've got inverted fullbacks. Your midfielders go in front, and to have one of those wings at the wing to get the assist in, to get the good balls in, that's what we really need. And uh, the Charlie, he has the inverted. Charlie, Charlie, he has the inverted fullbacks to allow the front three to get in the box and take the shots. Yes, but um, that. Sorry. The invert the wingers can two go to the left, can go to the right. They can they've got way more chances, they've got way more options. As you saw with the doggy's goal against Newcastle, he could go into the middle too. There's there's a rotation. That's one goal. That's one goal. Right. It's one, one point I'll give you. And wants that to happen. Yeah, but one he's not getting that because yeah. the system is set up like the any I've been coaching for years, Charlie, like years. Any team that plays with the front three, you want those three all to be able to score. Exactly. If, and, and if you look at any team at the end of the season, the majority of goals at the end of the season will have come from that front three. If you look at this season, I guarantee you by the time we get to the end of the season, it will be players that have played in the front three that have got the most goals. The Richies, the the the, the Johnsons, the the Suns, the Timos. They will have the most goals at the end of the season. The question is, have they got enough in them? And with Timo everything says no. Like, there's no evidence to suggest this guy has got the goals in him. Right. Johnson, you've got a good I... argument. But Timo, I don't know. I don't, one, I don't know. one thing I'll give you here, Charlie, yeah? But Alex, I need you to keep quiet on this one, mate, yeah? Um, <laughs> you'll see why in a minute, mate. You'll see... No, I, it'll get me in a minute. It'll I'm joking, I'm point. joking, I'm joking. I know. But what you're saying... Wait a minute, Charlie, I've been is... really quiet. So how are you saying that for, bro? Because sure, I'm going to say something Alex, that you're going to bite at. So just... Just wait a moment, yeah? You'll see what I mean. Charlie's 100% right with Werner. For me, Werner is a poor man's son. And I, th I don't think he's a bad player. He just, when it comes to finishing and that, he just has not got it and we know it. But for a 15 million backup player, he's perfectly fine. But I don't want backup players anymore. Backup. I want a player that can... 
either get in that team or be right there for if that player, like at Man City, makes one or two wrong moves on the pitch, out. Now you take his place. Werner's not good enough to do that. But if you want to bring him on for the odd game or 20 minutes here and there, I make you totally right. But don't you want Spurs to stop going for backup and now go for players of the same equality to fight for a place so you don't get people like Basuma, who seems to be extremely happy where he is, because no one's going to take that place. And Alex, that's why I said keep quiet, because I used that word twice you don't like. I'd be quite happy to play an academy player in front of him. So go on, well. Charlie. Let let Charlie answer it. Go on, mate. Go for it. So I hear what you say, but even the the best teams in the world have a backup player. There, there's always a backup mm-hmm. player. You need a backup no, player. You, the, the, a backup player isn't always world class, and he is. Oh, of course, Werner not. isn't isn't a goal scorer. He but he does the, all these assists, and to have that on the wing, to have that threat on the wing, that could really help us in, in late ends of the game when the opposition's really tired. They don't have all their strength, and we just have Werner who gives a good ball, and we get a goal. I think for a backup, it's great, and we could get Eze, we could get Olmo, we could get Jimenez, all those players. But you always still need that one player that if if shit hits the fan, you just get him in. He just helps you a bit, Charlie. Two things. Number one, mm-hmm. the best teams that win the trophies don't have backup players. They have players that directly compete for the position. So that it's competition they have on the bench, not backup. And secondly, the players that come off the bench at the teams that win the trophies, they've got goals in them for that for those positions. Timo Werner does not have the goals in him for that position. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he can get some assists. I'm not going to doubt that. We've seen it. He smacks it into the ball, tap in zone goals. But it, he doesn't have the goals in him. And that is the problem with Timo Werner. That's why Leipzig, the club that he left to go to Chelsea, who went back to, they don't want him. That's why Chelsea got rid of him. And now for us to consider signing him is we're ignoring what happened at Chelsea and we're ignoring twice what happened at Leipzig. Do you know he was the fourth choice at Leipzig? That's why he's come to us. He was fourth choice. So he's not he's not even competition. He's exactly what you said, a backup. But a backup doesn't win you silverware. Competition wins you silverware. And Mr. Box Office here, he hates the word backup, just so you know. Well, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's got Charlie. He got Charlie. I mean, the point, the point I make is... You know, for, Listen, I like Charlie. He's mature. Yeah, He's very the, mature. The thing is, though, Charlie, the I'm thing 16, is, guys. I'm 16. You're only going to learn, hey, you're only gonna learn that's with that's time. Fun. You're gonna only going to learn with time. Because I was backing players like Harry Winks, Davis, Sanchez. Look what happened. People, Dyer. They were calling Virgil van Dyer a couple of seasons ago. Virgil van Dyer. What, 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 what happened to Virgil van Dyer then? Went to Bayern Munich. Oh, he's, he's shown himself so well at Bayern Munich, isn't it? Even though they're saying that he's he's the best defender going there for some reason or another. But then I don't understand football if, I'm, if we're saying that, isn't it? Really. But you, you're only going to learn with time. And that's it. Because that's what I learned. You know what mm. I mean? So for me at the moment, if we're going to start saying that we need to win trophies, backups are not good enough. And okay, unfortunately, no one's going to change my mind. I no agree. Going to my mind. And, and I, if we're going to keep Werner... Right, it's, it's nothing on you, Charlie. Me. You're, le- you, you, you're going to learn with time. You, yeah. you, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not having a go at you, Charlie, because you're only seeing what you're seeing because you might have seen what you're seeing at the moment. But for me if, at the moment... If we keep Werner, okay. right, if we keep him... Uh, if we get four players in a transfer window that Ange wants and we keep Werner, I can live with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what Verne, I mean. That's what I mean. Agent, Agent, Werner's what, brought what in. Charlie want to say? Just, just what did Charlie want to say? Just doing a cheap, I'm, I'm, cheap deal I, 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 job, then, then I'm not happy about it. Agent, Agent, I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry to stop you, but I, just, I know Charlie, he's, he's made the effort to come on here, so I just want to see, because he was trying to say something. I, I want to see what he wanted to say. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, so my question was, first and first, in what aspect will we put Johnson then? Because do you see him as a backup player or do you see him as a as a squad player? What do you see him? And I, um, the thing you said about, I, I'd rather, have, yeah, with, if we had four signings that Ange wants, I think to keep Werner in, why would that be a problem? To keep him in, if we have the four signings that Ange wants, what, what would what would be the difference? Werner would just help us in the well, move. No, he wouldn't let us down. Guys, let him finish. Let Charlie finish. Let Charlie finish. Yeah, and no, he's asking finished. me the question. He's asking me the question. Uh, yeah. uh, well, my, my problem is, right, if that player gets injured who's in the first team, Werner becomes the first team. That's the but problem. Not if he makes four signings, right? 
If he makes his yeah, four yeah, signs, but, like, he yeah. But my point is, is that if if he's the backup, right, and you have got somebody in front of him, right, and that player gets injured for the whole season, he becomes the first team. So then you're relying on him for the whole season. That's my problem. So I'm just saying that it can't be about him being a backup. He's got to compete. That's my problem yeah. at the moment. Mm. Okay, but guys, uh, who says that if Ange buys his four players that they will adjust the system immediately? And I think that Werner could really just help us lift that and he could be a bit of competition for the other guy. And once well, that, they've got into but, the system... Well, but, we, but, 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 but he's, but he's not my, because my, he doesn't my, score my, goals. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. score goals, so he's, yeah. he's not my, competition. On that... That's, because that's the recruitment, no one can deny the recruitment's been good in the last few windows. You know, we've brought in some good players and we've got them for not top notch prices. And we spent £600 million on players since nine, since the stadium opened, you know, and there's a lot of flops there. And most of them have been the expensive ones, you know, Davidson Sanchez, the Celso, and Don Belly, you know, yeah. Richarlison, <laughs> possibly, right, as well. So that, that would be £200 million without their wages, right? So, but recently the recruitment has been, to me, I think it's been very good. It's been very good. These are still green players, green players that need to progress and grow, right? I think they will because they've shown enough potential to play in a Premier League that they're not out of their depth, right? But they need to improve. Now, I want to see four players in a window. I could list 10 or 11 or one out, you know. I could list Roden, you know, Winks, Emerson, Skip, you know, um, you've got Regulon, you've got Indombelli, you've got La Celso, you've got Gill. I mean, and we could bring in at least 80 odd mil for these players. I'm not listing them all now, right? So that to add to whatever is in the transfer kitty, I would expect four players in the summer transfer window, right? I would expect that. Then I expect, and then Angie's look, anyone who thinks Angie ain't looked at this squad and thought, yeah, we're okay, but like we need to really like fix a few holes in this squad. We he need knows. to go. He knows. He's, 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 he's been in a different league. He knows. And he won't mess about. And if it means get, I don't think he'll get rid of a coolie and all that. I think John we know that Johnson's gonna stay, right? You know that Richie will stay unless the Saudis come in and offer big money for him, right? You we know there's a lot of players that are gonna stay. Uh, but Werner. If he stays, that costs money. So then you have to make the judgment call on whether you want, whether that's going to affect your transfer policy across the board. And One. I don't want Werner, right? I don't want him anyway, but I don't want him, even if he's just a squad player, right? If it's going to affect us bringing someone else and we can use that money and, you know. Do you know, do you know, do you know how I look at it? Like how I look at things, everything at Spurs, really. I just put it in the comments. Mm. The fact we argue over Werner means there's a problem. The fact mm. we argue over Levy means there's a problem mm. with the ownership. The fact we argue over Basima means there's a problem with the six. Anything that fans are split on, that proves there is a problem with something. And we never argue about Van der Ven. We never argue about Vicario. We never argue about the amount of money we're making, right? But the things we argue about, the things that divide us means something is problematic. This Werner thing, every week we discuss it. Every channel discusses it. Mm. This means mm. it's a problem. One and and that, 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 that for me is a sign to say, don't, don't sign him. That, I've had but, enough. But, but, but there's a lot of fans like Charlie. Listen, there's a lot of fans who agree with Charlie. I'm mm. not going to make out yeah. Charlie is on his own here. He's, he might be on his own on this show. But in the fan base, there's a lot of fans that, are, that that totally agree with what Charlie says. You know, I'm I'm half with him because I don't think it was the worst move getting him. But for one reason, he plays exactly the same as Son does on the left wing with his cutting in. Exactly the same. It's just like I've repeated it. He's a poor man, Son. He's he's not as he's not in the same world, let alone character. Mm. But the thing I've had enough of is time and time again, and this is why I've lost a little bit of faith in Ange as well, is because he's blatantly said we're going to go for quantity, not quality. I've had, yes, you need quantity in a squad. I get that. But if you actually want to do something and you actually want to win something and you actually want to be serious, you need quality. 
not just Conti. And again, Ange has gone, and he's basically just said it as well. We're going to go for quali quantity, not quality. I want quality, not just a backup. Mm, he didn't actually say that, Dan, because if he did... Yes, he, he did. Never... Do you want me to read it out to you? Do you want me to read out what he said? Yeah, go on, go on, read it out. Okay, you're going to have to let me get the thing up. He didn't right, use those up, words. Right? Yeah, he said, he said they didn't want to buy one star. He said they wanted to buy multiple players, right? Something like that. There, there you go. Want to spend a hundred million Absolutely. on one player. That's what he said. Absolutely. No, but that's not that's because. Want, that's not because. That's saying he, that is saying Adrian. I want. Quant I'm going to get quantity, not quality. No, no. To We're me, not that, gonna, that right. doesn't. That I'm to not me. buying superstars because I want to get no, no. three good players. No, that's quantity. That's what you say. Not quality. Cole Palmer was to me, forty-two million. To me, that says the recruitment team do is what they're doing under Johan Lang, right? Lang her actually, even though it's Lange, and. We're going to use the data analysis. We're going to use the Brighton system. We're going to go after players. So, so what we are, what we're trying to do with whatever budget it's we've got place, is it? to maximise our incomings, right, and get rid of players to fund the transfers as well. Maximise our incomings with what we believe are quality players, without going out and spending like like a hundred million on one player. I don't. I don't Still. You, you can take it which way. I mean, like, if your opinion on what he said is what it is, that's fine. I haven't got an issue with that. I don't take it that way. He's not going to say things that, are, you know, that are going to have people like, you know, throw pelters at him left, right, and centre, right? But people will always, they'll always do it when, 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 he, when managers do presses. It's always the same. They have to be so careful what they say because they know. They're straight in line from their fan base. They're going to receive loads of pelts straight away. So Still, they have to be very I'll send you the picture. If you can bring it up on here, I've sent you the picture on yeah. WhatsApp of right, okay. um, me, what you sent me of, of yeah, what Ange said. Okay. If I'm wrong, um, I'll hold my hands up, Dan, if I'm wrong. He right? didn't use the exact words quantity and quality, but if yeah. you want to translate what he has said, when Stell shows it on here... Then we're down to interpretation, like, Dan. That's the thing. No, 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 no. I'll clarify. What was the argument? The Basically, argument, I'm uh, saying Andrew's admitted that he's going to go for quantity, not quality. Guys, don't forget to like right. the stream. Okay. <laughs> well, well said, never Charlie. Said... You're brave to come on. We, we want to see you again, right? Hey, I, I, honestly, I was, I was nowhere near as mature as you at 16. Hats off to you. What, what Adam right. said was it was two things on two separate days that link, right? He never said quantity over quality, but he might as well have. What he said was, we're not going to spend £100 million on a player. We're not going to do that here. I don't think we'll ever do that here, right? He said, we're not a club that's just going to go and buy superstars. And then what he later said was, we're not going to spend big money on a player. We'd rather buy two, three, four players for the money. So mm -hmm. effectively, that means it doesn't mean quantity over quality. It means quantity with the money that you've got. But the problem is with that comment is name me a club that spent the entire budget on lots of players and they're all quality. It doesn't happen. It's, that doesn't what happen. Said here, still, so, so, is so, so effectively, effectively, it is quantity over quality without saying it. That's that's kind His of exact words here done by Fabrizio Romano. I think not just stars for the future, but also solid players. I don't expect any superstars, any superstars, I repeat again. We yeah. know Tottenham's strategy is different from this. The strategy of Spurs is to sign two, three, four different players rather than just one superstar. This is the clear project of the club. Now, anyone who does not translate that as we are just going to do what Spurs do and go for quantity, not quality, I... Don't get what they're reading. It, 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 no, 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 no. Well, one point on that is the fact that, like, when you talk about superstars, but and Beppy's out there, and like, oh, there aren't look, no, miss, come on, Adrian, Ronaldo no, 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 of no, 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 they weren't even our first choice. Well, our recruitment's been good. But we 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 brought in. It's what, been lucky, like, Adrian, as well. We didn't want Van der Ven as our first choice. We didn't want Vicario as our first choice. We got them out of pure luck because we couldn't get the other ones, and oh, we God, have fallen on our feet with that. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know, you do you know, luck? Do you know what happened? Luck? Because they weren't who we wanted first first time. Vicario, I knew that in many right? way. 
but they yeah, weren't but the they won't, it was they a won't on the t- they there was an the argument of, of Raya over Vicario there was to, a to be to be fair Timo Werner was never on the list the only yeah, reason I'm not talking we... about Werner I'm talking about Van der Ven and all that stuff they were looking at him still everyone was looking yeah. at him of course they were but they, they weren't were... first choice we wanted Tapsoba and we wanted Raya the reason we actually got Vicario is because Raya was more interested than elsewhere now, Vicario was looked at by Bayern Munich, no, Chelsea, Brentford Arsenal. Had to look... of, the, of the transfer fee. Okay, if you want to be precise then. But Vicario was being looked at by Bayern Munich. Um, obviously, we were looking at him. Uh, Juventus, Inter Milan, uh, and other teams went for him. Mm. Yeah, Inter true. Milan had actually got him. As all they had to do was sell Onana because they just ain't got the money to pay 17 million up front. So literally, just before Nana went over, he literally had not far off signed his contract and Spurs just went, thank you, we'll have him. And he was more than happy to come to the Premiership. He'd only ever played a season and a half in Serie A. Apart from the past year and a half, nobody knew of him. I only knew of him because I follow Serie A. That's mm. the only reason. Mm. But we landed on our feet with him and he wasn't our first choice. Tapsoba was our first choice. But we just weren't willing to pay the money, so we went for the cheaper version of Van der Ven, and God, have we landed on our feet with him as well. Mm. There has been some lucky buyers, but no one's going to complain. But I've just you had enough, lucky. and even my manager has admitted you, Dan, that we're going to go for good players, not stars. Do, right, go on, Charlie, you think, what are you going to say, mate? Do you think our luck in the transfer window changed because we have started to use data and analysis and the companies that do that? Because they're a football no, company. No, the luck changes it. when you don't get your... Obviously, you've got your list, but you've got your first player you want, but you've got to have a list. And then you can send your If we would have been able to afford, if we would have been able to afford Tapsoba, we wouldn't have got Van der Ven. But who knows how Tapsoba would have turned up? Quality defender, but how would he have turned up? Mm. So we had to go for second choice, which was Van der Ven. And I don't think no one's complaining. Yeah, they've got Tatar and Hincapi at Leverkusen as well, haven't they? Well, I wouldn't mind either. Um, right now. Guys. Go on, Charlie, you were saying, mate. Uh, Charlie, just one second. I've just got to do a couple of super chats and go for it. A user says, reports show Napoli want Kulu to replace Victor. I think most fans or many would be all right with that. Um, Dio, thank you, channel member. Welcome to the club. And A user says, Tango and Dombele has planted a seed of fear when spending big money. You're, you're probably right with that. Mm-hmm. Right with that. Yeah, Charlie, go for it. Uh, what you say with luck, I think if you make a list, your first and second options are like that's not lucky, you, you go for them, and maybe the first oh, one doesn't work out, but the second one is always it's still a good choice. It doesn't mean they're bad, it doesn't mean they're worse. They've just got two that they really want. And to say, Oh, it's luck, it wasn't luck because they were looking at the players for quite a long time, they wanted the players, they were just not first choice, you know what I mean? Yeah, mm. so if it's oh, not yeah. first I've choice, it's, oh, it's oh, been oh, a bit oh, of luck, hasn't it? All right, so so do you do you think then that Veliz was our first, second, or third choice striker? I don't think he was a first. Second. I think it was more for the future. I don't yeah. really see him as. I don't think yeah. he, he was meant for now. I think he was meant for like like three years, four years time. Yeah. So so we've basically bought a player for a period in time when Ange might not even be here. Is that not an issue? Yeah, but still, in fairness, we've done that with Vuskovic. We've done that with Lewis Kuss Bergval as well. Bergval. The club has still got to move in every direction. You know, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, but Adrian, hold on. But you're buying players not for the manager then? Because the next manager that comes in will inherit them. What if he doesn't want those players? How well, are you moving in the right direction? Well. This is, but, but this is, isn't this part of the problem? We've, isn't this part of the Spurs problem that managers come to the club and they inherit players they don't want because it doesn't suit what they want to do. I think, so the, I think the problem is still. That's okay, though, still, isn't it? That's okay if you're spending what is what you call nominal amounts of money for these players, like Bergvel, six, eight million, whatever it is, or Vaskovic, maybe three or four million or whatever it is off of Zagreb, wherever we come from out there, right? Yeah, and Zagreb. you're thinking, like, we're spending what we consider to be not normal transfer fees for, like, First team squad members. Overall was thirty million because pounds you're, because you're reinforcing. Fine, so you're reinforcing your academy and your academy structure, which is improved beyond doubt through Paratici, I may say, right? And 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 you're doing that because you're doing that anyway because you know. 
that most managers don't last two or three years anyway. Yeah, but these players weren't That's, signed for the you, academy. You still they have to sign. Hold on, I don't imagine they weren't signed for the academy. If if you're a good professional club, you plan plan for a. Future Venise wasn't signed action. for the academy. Adrian, Adrian, Adrian no, 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 you're waffling. You're waffling. He, Venise was not signed Fair for enough. the academy. <laughs> please, please don't talk about the academy again, please. No, 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 no. I want to talk about the academy again, please. Bring it. Bring this back. Bring this back. Veliz was not signed for the academy. He was in the first team from day one. He played half of one game. He came on against Brighton. Then he got shipped out to Seville. They don't want him. He's sitting on their bench now. Doesn't even get game time. Veliz was signed for us now. The reality is he's not good enough. So if we're saying he's one for the future, three, four years time, Andrew isn't going to be here in that he's time. 20. So the next, so the next manager has then got to inherit him. But then you're now giving the next manager players that he might not want. Is that, so, is, look, so we just, take so, gamble on foreign players. You don't know if they're going to like do well in the Premier League. There's lots of famous players, Varane and all that. Never, never made it in the Premier League, right? But you still, you st these youngsters, whenever we have a club in Europe is after them, we compete with them. We get some of them in. Are we talking about the no, no, you're changing the subject. You're changing the subject. I'm talking about Veliz. I'm only talking yeah, about Veliz. You don't know if he's any good or not. But you're well, well, I, no, 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 I, no, I, no, I do know. No, no, Adrian, I do. No, no, Adrian, I do know because if he was good, he'd be at Spurs right now, and he'd be coming off the bench and playing. So, well, then, okay, okay, then, what attracted Spurs and the recruitment team to buy him in the first place? Then that's 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 not my question. My question is, we have signed a player that isn't ready or good for Spurs right no, now. It's, 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 it's true. Because true, it's all the right. potential. That, that is a problem. So, like, so is what you're point. saying is we should never go after a player that's no, got no, potential. No, no, what I'm saying is, no, no, what I'm saying, no, no, because no, I'm sticking to the point. What I'm saying is when people <laughs> say, what well, no, when people say it's luck, we, 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 the player was on the list. I'm giving you a player that wasn't on the list. There's no way Valiz was our first, second third, fourth choice striker to bring to the I don't club. know what choice he was. I know... Well, I, I, know I know he wasn't. I know he wasn't because hold, he's... Hold and I, no, I know, I know he wasn't. Team and no, Adrian, of Adrian. We're after the no, Adrian, I'm answering your question. We know he wasn't because he's not at the club now playing football. And like Charlie said, he's one for the future. So then that proves he wasn't, wasn't on the list. No, but he he's wasn't one. brought in to replace... Kane, he was that is, but that is, but that is evidence. That is evidence. Future this is, but, that was but the this is evidence. But this is evidence. I don't care about Kane. This is evidence to prove that we do sign players that aren't on the list. No, he he, he was. Look, why was he? Signed? Oh yes, he wasn't was on the list. To why, why was he signed? <laughs> Oh, I like the little bit I've seen of him. I actually, like the like what I see of the player. Veliz was signed. The one for the future, right? Well, Ange doesn't want players for the future. He wants players now. Every manager at Spurs wants players now. Hold on, hold on. I don't care. I, I do care what Ange wants, first team squad and all that. Like, but I don't. But my bugbear with all this is when people moan about that, is the fact that you're a football club and from the top to bottom, you have to keep progressing and trying to grow. And you, you do bring in young players. And the re reason you bring them in, even if they're a gambler or not, it's not about the manager you've got in situ at this particular moment. It's about the future. Because Ange might only be at the oh, club for two or three years. What are you talking years. about oh, the future, no, no, Adrian? No, 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 no. We might be there in the future. Only still. Charlie's going to be here in the future. We're not. Right. So what you're saying is... No plus, disrespect plus, everyone. Hold on, hold on. Charlie's going to be here in 30 years. Oh, right. we we might I'm, loving, I'm loving the debate, right? But what you're saying is, right, it's like... What do you mean the look, future? What, we're, what are we saying here then, right? Since the Levy club, joined the club, I've heard the future. Hold on. Hold on. When does so this future saying? arrive? Adrian, still, when does still. this future arrive? Hold on. None of these still. youngsters ever still. break into still. this team. None still. of them. Yeah. So what, what you're saying to me is the club shouldn't plan for a future without Ange. Of course they should. No, of course no I'm should. not saying that. I'm not saying that. I never said that. Well, that's what the way I'm it's coming is, across. No, no. But you're no, saying he's not an angel signing. Well, of course he's not an angel signing. Because you've forgotten the Spurs question that we're asked. Spurs no, will make because, non end signings, and that's being professional. No, because Adrian. Because you've, no, it's because you're deflecting. No, Dan Smiley. <laughs> no, you are straw manning I'm just listening, mate. That's all. No, Adrian, Adrian, you do this every week. You straw man the argument. This is the point, and you go there. You do it all the time, right? The point is, we 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 the, about players being on the list, and I'm giving you an example of a player that is not on our list 
because like you've all told me right, this he might not is be on the list but thank might you be on. thank hold on, you hold on, hold Adrian, on. yes thank but, you that was my point on, this is what i said it took you 20 future. minutes to say he's not this on is, the list this is, you've well, literally this agreed with what i'm saying in 20 minutes so johan langer right We'll be going out looking no, at players like getting Lucas Bergvall and things like that. Ainge probably might never have heard of Just Lucas admitted what I was trying to say. He's not on the list. I'm, there you go. There's evidence. I've given it to you and you've agreed. It took 20 minutes for you to, well, to, to see. I think, I think the problem is at the moment, right, is that we, we, we're going on about this, this plan at the moment. Until we see, yes, uh, until we see some <laughs> results from it, I'm until tired. we see some results from it, now. right? Until we see some results from it, right? Fans will be on board, right? Because we've been through so many things, um, so many, um, uh, what is it, um, journeys at the moment that we haven't seen it before, yeah? And we haven't seen the results, and that's it, right? And then until we see results, that that's when people will start being on board, right? I think a trophy would would save a lot of hassle for some of the fan base at the moment. Let's be honest. Yeah. But at the moment, it's just all talk at the moment. No disrespect to you, Charlie, but, um, you know, Mr. Bot's office, the main event doesn't go and the ratings killer, the professor of truth and entertainment just doesn't care. You know what I mean? Sorry. You know, I, and no one's going to change my mind. Yeah. If Kuva doesn't change my mind and the Smatty doesn't change my mind, no one's changing my mind because those are two are, spoken a lot more sense than anybody in, on, on, the, on the planet who's a Spurs fan. So, you know, so at the moment, it's just time at the moment and that's it. People can talk how much you want saying, that, oh, this looks good, this looks good, this looks good, this looks good. Until we win trophies, that's when it looks good. And that's it for me. I'm sorry. And that's it. Yeah. Because I think at the moment, we're just getting people that were positive saying this. And again, I'm not having to go at you, Charlie. Big up for you to come on. And that's it. We've got positive people saying this. And then and then we'll call negative and that's it. And it's it's the same old story I've heard, seen for the last five years now. Since it's been on YouTube. You can have your debate there. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Because I need to go to bed. But um, big up to you, Charlie, for coming on. Um, yeah, uh, up, um and uh, it'd be yeah. nice to have some more people in the, in the chat that have a bottle like Charlie as well. Big up to everybody. Big up to you, yeah. Dan. I might yeah. disagree with you, but you're, you know, you know, yeah, you know, I've cool, got, uh, you know, I think highly of you as well. And big up to you, Adrian, as well. You know what I mean? Oh. And I'm out of here. <laughs> bye bye. Thank Make you sure you subscribe to Mr. Box Office TV. Big up, Alex, for coming on as always. Then a Spurs super chat says, "I'm sick of this Tottenham way of not buying top quality." the trophy winning players, but by young mid players in bunches. How can our fans continue to defend this idea when it has had zero success? And do you know what guys, mm -hmm. this, this is the key point, isn't it? Mm. Where until we win trophies, the way Spurs does it is a failure and it proves to be a failure. And what happens is when, when Redknapp came in, yeah, Charlie, I'll bring you in on this. When Redknapp came in, it was a project. Failed. Then in came Pochettino, project, failed. Then it was the win now project with Mourinho and then Conte, failed, failed. And now we're being told another project and people just, fans, they just constantly buy into it and they forget everything that's happened in the past. And, and I think what the worrying thing is here, and I think this is why this conversation is happening, is because Ange is saying things that scares us because we've seen those things happen in the past with the other managers it's failed. We're not going to spend big on a player. We're going to buy three or four, not one. And that same pattern has always ended up in failure. And that's why we have these arguments and these debates. Go for it, Charlie. Say what you want to say, bro. Well, the, the Valise thing, I think Levy didn't really know what to expect from Ange Postecoglou at the start. So buying a Valise, uh, that's understandable. Like not going on the list, just getting a cheap player, just for like backup. I mean, I'm saying backup, but he was not back before. They didn't see how he played, all of this stuff. Well, now your point was that you want to win trophies and stuff, but... This is his first season with fourth place after an eighth place. We've, we've got the points we've got now as the points we had uh, last season at the end. So we're, we're doing way better with, with a team that was crap last year. We, we, Basuma couldn't play. The whole team just didn't play. And now randomly we're fourth place. And we, we're only moaning about that. Oh, we're not winning this. We're not winning that. We're in the first season, guys. We're first season. No. We've got so much longer. We've like 
next year, let's maybe we'll win a title, or maybe we'll win a cup. But to to expect to win the league already, I think it's just ludicrous. No. I think just give them two more seasons. Charlie, so Charlie, so what do you think? What was I going to Dan bring in? Three things, and then Dan can speak. Three things. Number one, uh, Conte before he got sacked had more points than Ange, and as you said, mm. with the worst team. Number two. I've praised this season. Top four for me is a good start for any manager at Spurs. Mm. But I've seen that under Poch. I've seen that under Conte. I've seen this before. I've seen us get top four. For me, this is nothing new. I, have, I, I haven't seen anything that I haven't seen before. And the last thing I'll say is this. And this is where we argue. This is where we disagree. For us to win trophies, I believe Spurs have got to change the way they buy players. They've got to start buying Two, three, four, really, really good players, not a mixed bag of seven, eight players. So I hear what you're saying, and you might end up being right next season, but I need to see it because I haven't seen anything different yet from Spurs that I haven't seen under previous managers. The only thing that's different this time is Ange seems to be really good with the media and he knows what what to say to get everyone on board, which is a good thing, but Potter was like mm. that too. Potter was like that. Mm. Yeah, Dan, go for it. Well, when it comes to that, I can only judge by what I see at the moment. And I just feel to, a lot of Spurs supporters, I've said it before, we were the easiest ones on the planet to win over. I could have taken over as manager and won 90% of that fan base. Play attacking football, boys. That's exactly what they did. Fan base totally happy for a certain amount of time. The reason I always go back to our previous manager is because he had a squad, not just a defence, but a squad, bar Harry Kane, that was so much lower standards than this. So much. Skip and Hoiberg in the middle. Son out on the left when he was completely broken. Kulazeski just doing what he ain't been doing. Poro was just crap. <laughs> Sanchez, Dyer, and Longley in the middle with maybe Davis or Sessignon out on the left. Now that I've seen some of these players play, yeah, I expect a sixth place off of him because of the quality we have actually got in that squad, in that first 11. We should be looking at sixth place with those players. The main issue I've got is I don't like his tactics. I don't like his style of play of pushing up to the halfway line all the time. I don't like the inverted stuff, which I've got solid proof why you can question it. Because how can you have a defence like this where people say Romero is world-class, Udoji is going to be, Poro is very good, and Van der Ven just looks the dog's nuts. And we are actually worse in defence than where when we were with Conte, with Sanchez and Dyer. And long lay in the middle. Okay, he held it back more. He had to. But this is the things I question the man on. Until next season, we shall see. But it's another thing that he has stated is why I lose a bit of faith in the manager. Is He has stated that he's not going to change his way of football for nobody. He plays this way and it's the only way. For me, to be that quality, to be a good manager and get somewhere, you've got to adapt to the Premiership. He's never had a good job in his life in football. Well, Celtic, but come on. Celtic is substandard in a substandard league. All right, Celtic and Rangers, all right. People take it offensive, but the Scottish League, most of the people on here, including me, probably couldn't even name the 10 teams in it. And... He's got to adapt to the Premiership. And I just don't think his overall style, if he sticks to this, the Premiership's too good for him. The Premiership is too good for his style. And we will never, ever, ever be able to buy the quality of players, not quantity, that we want to make Ange ball. Dan, they don't, want you to call think him. don't you think you'll have learned by you think learned by the team he picked away with Fulham in the League Cup? Don't you think we'll have learned? He's been well, really we obviously didn't learn very much, did he? Because before. we went there and got I mean, banged I'm 3 0 again. Because I want to be positive, right? But, no, but be realistic. Yeah, I, I There's nothing the wrong with being realistic, style Adrian. Of play because, like, every podcast has, has, you know, they've debated this issue. Should we be playing a higher line? Should we get a number six in? Should we do that? Listen, we're fourth in the Premier League in a season when everyone expected prior to this season we're going to finish mid-table because, like, we're rubbish and Levy's gotten another manager. And Ange probably wasn't even first choice, right? You had Slop and others and all, this, all these mm -hmm. other managers mentioned, right? But... We seem to have got a manager in that 
is the Spurs way that fits our DNA, right? Now, of attacking football, it might not be the brand. It's a brand that you're obviously concerned about, right? Understandable. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about it. I'm still getting my head around a lot of things with the midfield and the inverted players, right? But, uh, yeah, so, like, and going back to you, Stel, I disagree with you on, on the point of the foul thing because I didn't think Poch was a failure. He wasn't backed in 518 days in a transfer window because Levy put all, all his eggs in a basket. Adrian, what I, ne I, never said, I never said Poch failed. I never said Poch failed. I said the project failed. Okay, okay. Because what Poch did... Because I, I did where, say... Where we as fans fans were going to, project going to the old stadium, biting yeah. our fingernails when we're playing Chelsea and Arsenal at home and all that, like, what Poch did prior to nearly... Actually, it was the Villa game away when we won, which probably saved his job, right? What Poch did, he raised expectations. Whereas we're all like, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could get UA for League Cup football? Get that, get that, get that. And Poch did that and more. And we finished like second, third and fourth under Poch, right? And he wasn't even backed. And then we went all them away games without winning and we got to the Champions League final and he was sacked. But he was never backed. And he's he's suffering again because like he's gone to Chelsea. Todd Bowley's thrown him all these hundreds of millions of pound players or whatever it is, and like the, half the players he probably don't want, and they'll probably end up getting in the sack eventually. I can see him back at Spurs one day. But going on, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful, and we should also separate the fact that the club should always want to progress in every aspect of the club, in every area from the academy up with the women's super league, blah 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 blah. And if that means bringing in young players... I couldn't, care less. I couldn't care less about the women's yeah, team, the academy team. Care, so. I couldn't care about the NFL team. We're going to start. I care. I'm, I'm being sure biased. You care about I care about that. Birth... But, no, no, I don't. But, but hold, I don't. On, hold on, hold on. No. Most fans... In. No, no. Graham, the when you pay, do you, do, you, do, you go, do you go and pay to watch the academy? Do you go and pay to watch the women? Do you go I and pay to watch the NFL? Your money, all your money, because <laughs> you're saying things that aren't true. All your money goes all to watch the right. men's first team. Right. If you like the women's team as well, if you like no, the no, NFL games, no, if you like no, the academy, no, brilliant, no, enjoy no, it. But let's be honest, argument. this yeah. show, but, but that's what you said. You and, said and we I'd, want it all. I just want the men's And I wish you stopped talking good. while I'm interrupting, right? Because basically, right, what I'm trying, enough, trying right. to say is... No, what I'm trying right, to say right. is... It's right. me nuts. Okay, fine, fine. I get that, right? I get everyone's point of view. What I'm trying to say is we bring them in anyway. No, ma no matter what. You have to want to progress at all levels of your club. I mean, when it, what, what happens is where our fan base is. No, they all go, the focus goes oh, on the mental oh, we brought a Velez it takes in. the focus away. Hold on, it hold, on focus hold on, away. hold on. Still, you know as well as I do, Velez was yeah. not brought in to walk straight into the first team. Well, he was, was on it? the first team bench. Yeah, but yeah, but he wasn't brought in. Yeah, but, as, yeah, as but what? Of, yeah, but what? Not, <laughs> you got my even, first team bench. Listen, if, 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 Pep goes out and buys a player for 40 million or whatever, 50 million. They might sit on the bench and not get game time for, for another season. That's so Pep. Not he wins trophies that. every year. Man City, they, don't compare us to them. We're different. No, we can't no, afford to I'm do not that. comparing them with them. You're, you're twisting words, right? It's called sophistry, right? Sophistry is a clever but false argument, right? That's what it is. And, it's and just like, false. It's just false. <laughs> <laughs> I love these shows. I really love these shows. Yeah. yeah. But like, because we can really like get into the nitty gritty of what really bugs us. Now, I get bugged when fans go on about, oh yeah, Vaskovic. What are we brought him for? He can't even come and join the squad till next season because he's got to be 18, you know? I mean, like every club in Europe was after him. So why shouldn't we be after him? Adrian, you know, there's a difference get the there's, 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 No, no, there's, 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 there's a big difference listen, here. There's, listen, no, there's a big difference listen, here. Listen, Charlie, know, Charlie, Charlie, Charlie's, young. Young. <laughs> Charlie's yes, young. Charlie's young. Yes, mate, young. One minute. Young. Adrian, Charlie's young. He's excited. He's got lots yeah. of years ahead of him. He's got patience. He's as patient as anyone's going to be. You, you've seen it. You've watched it all. You've witnessed it all. You're at the latter stages of life. And I'm still you're frustrated. frustrated. You're, no, no, but you're patient because you can kick back. You've seen it all. I've seen hardly nothing. I don't have the patience and I don't want to have the patience because, Adrian, I was told this. This is what I was told. Ten years ago, um, we can't compete. 
we need a stadium. And then for five years, we saw all these different drawings of a stadium, then the stadium mm. changed. And then finally, we got permission to build the stadium. And then we had to move to Wembley for two years. Then they built the stadium. So all these years, be patient. Okay, I'm patient, I'm patient, I'm patient. Then they build the stadium. And I'm thinking, right, we go in the stadium. Well, you've got to be patient again because COVID. Okay, all right, okay. COVID's gone. Then we're told you've got to be patient again because we've got to wait in three years' time. FFP is going to kick in and all these financial rules. Okay, we wait for that. It's kicked in now. Clubs are getting charged. Clubs are getting fined. Now he's saying to us, now he's doing it again. Now he's saying, I need more equity. We need new investors. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. You told me 10 years ago, I've got to wait for a stadium. Mm -hmm. Then you tell me once the stadium's ready, I've got to wait for COVID to go away. Mm -hmm. Then COVID goes away. I've got to wait for FFP to kick in. That kicks in, and now you're telling me I've got to we've got we've got to get new investors. Adrian, you guys have got patient. Good luck to you. I, I'm so happy. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I, I want to see silver. I, I, I don't have patient. Okay. I want to see, I want to see and... the 200 million pounds we spend every summer on proven talent. I want right. to see three or four top players. I don't want to see Valiz. I don't want to see Bergvines and fine, Gil. Fine, I don't fine. want to see Solomon on a free. No, Adrian, I don't want it. I don't want any of them. I want proven I talent. That. I get you. But that's not what we're doing. Right. We're Hang on doing... a sec. Hang on. Hang on a second. Charlie, what do you want to see, mate? What do you want to see Spurs bring in? Where do you think Ange can take us? I think it's his first season. So this, I don't really care. He, this is literally the development. Now the club's going to back him. Next year, I'd like to see the top three and maybe an FA Cup or a Community Shield, something like that. But I think... Charlie's 16, he's got time on his side. <laughs> I do. But the thing I is, haven't. To, to, I haven't. Guys, <laughs> That's my point. Guys, because, <laughs> listen, listen, yeah, we just sat Conte, we just sat Mourinho, we just sat all the new nurse brands. Now we've got Ange, but we can't expect Ange to win everything within, like, just by the snap of his fingers, because he can't. Yeah, he has yeah. to develop the team. And maybe he's we need patience. I think he's had a great but start. He's, he's had a great start. And let's maybe not have patience, but he can't just snap his trophy into our hands. We have to still play for it. And we, if we don't have the squad for that, we have to still buy the players. So I don't get why. We're, oh, yeah, I don't have the patience. We need oh, another year. I've FA Cup in his first season, Charlie. Yeah, but his second season, he got like 10. In the COVID season, he did horrible. But he won that he trophy, like though. But he won that trophy where our manager in his first season dropped the entire squad and put the put put the entire bench on the pitch and we got battered at Fulham. But that was a mistake. But managers make exactly. a mistake. And I think... it, it, yeah, but yeah, that's my point. We we that the, these mistakes happen every year, and then I'm told in, no, but be Andrew, patient. Uh, be to him, patient. But, but, listen, the, the difference with Angers. Guys, the yeah. difference with Angers, he came from Celtic, he came from all these other things. He was not used to the Premier League. Like Arteta, he was the um, assistant manager Arteta of, never of Pep managed Guardiola. Before. Arteta never he, managed was the, he, he was the assistant manager of Pep Guardiola. So he did have yeah. that insight. Ange didn't have it yet. He came from the Japanese and league. And the so, 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 so you're saying we've got to wait for Ange to learn how to coach in this country? No, but that, no. that was the, that was the literally, the first, that was in the first two months. So I mean, to say, now he knows yeah, what that, to do. Now he knows what to do. So, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, he you, didn't you know say exactly know what, to, what to do at okay, the start. You, you say that, but then we played Man City at home in our ground. Yeah, fair play, Man City's better. We didn't have one shot and got. But that, he didn't know how to adapt to the game. Yeah, but it, but it was my point. It always happens with every manager in these cup games or when there's something on the line. But yeah, when it comes what? to top four, they've all got the magic. Look, I, I, for me, I don't have the yeah, patience. question. Have you got no faith I don't want, in I don't, want, I, have I don't no have... Faith? If he signs Timo Werner, and we go and sign eight well, players. There's only one player, team. though, still. You, if you're throwing you on ask me a question, do you want the answer? No, no. Do you want the answer? Of course you can. It's your show. But, but you, you asked the question, right? If we sign Timo Werner this summer, I'm Ange out. And if he but signs, what? What? If on, he signs on, eight or nine players. I don't if, want if, him. I'm, I'm, let, let, let me answer the question. Go on. It, and if he signs eight or nine players instead of three or four good players, um, and out because I right. know this project will fail. I've right. seen it before. So, so if you ain't going to convince me, hold on, hold on, no, that's fair enough. That's fair enough, right? It's good fun. It's good fun, right? So if he signs Timo Werner, yeah. but he also brings in four other players in the season in the transfer window. Yeah. Now I'm not talking known name superstars because there ain't many Galacticos out there now anyway, right? But yeah, if he brings them in, they've been researched by the recruitment team. 
the analytics have been done. Rob McKenzie, Chief Scout's gone out and watched the players. I don't care what they do. I don't care what they do. And he bring, they bring four players in and they bring Tina Werner in. Are you still Angie yeah. out? Okay. Right. That's fair. No, no, no. I have an answer. I have an answer. I have an answer to that. You, you change the question. You, you're now saying to me, if we sign four really good players, and we keep Timo and my Ange out, I will have to see what those players are like. If they turn out to be Van der Ven level, then I'll give them another season. I'll get. I, I will buy into it for another season. Okay. But if we sign Timo Werner as a backup to the other seven players that we bring in, I know this project will fail. And I know we will end up flopping again because if, I've seen look, it too many times. Right. We we know the system, right? With the wide wingers, right? We yeah. know we've got Johnson's going to stay. Kulu's going to stay. He ain't going to get rid of him. Solomon will be given a chance to show if he can do something. Well, we're right. not winning nothing then. If he oh, keeps oh, Kulu, oh, oh, keeps oh, Solomon, oh, signs so, Timo oh, Werner, oh, we're winning oh, nothing. Oh, we're winning oh, nothing. You get excited. We're not going to beat the best teams. <laughs> we will not beat the best teams. It's not going to happen. So, it's not going to happen. No. They will stay. We know he's going to stay. The back six is staying. The four midfielders are staying. We know that Son, Werner and probably Johnson and Kulu are going to stay. You know, that's like 12, 13 players winning another 12 in the squad. Right? Can, I, can I just say, by the way, right, because I yeah. think Go on. Go on this might say. bring some clarity, right? Stelios, mm. whose project will fail? Angie's. This isn't Angie's project, mm. right? You you guys need to understand this. I go to the club. I, I, I'm so privileged to go to the club <laughs> for a way. The project is the clubs. The club have hired a manager who they think will fit the project. And the manager has said, I can do your project. What this manager doesn't understand is this project has never, ever worked in the 24-year history of Spurs. It always fails. Spurs don't want to budge from their project. There's a blueprint out there how to do it. There are, there are proven winning methods of how to do it. Spurs don't want to do that method. They think they know better. They think they can do it where you sign seven, eight players every window. It doesn't no, work. Like that. I'm not into that. I'm not into that. Right. That's what we're doing, Adrian. That's what we that's no, what no, we're no, doing. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. But recently, recently in recent transfer windows, we have brought in your dogie, Saar, you know. We we have and brought Belize in and Saar, Solomon. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. And Fraser Foster. We don't, we don't know. We don't know if Solomon's Very good enough. enough. We don't know about Solomon. You know he's not good enough, Adrian. We know oh, Solomon's not good enough. How do you know that? That? When, when he played against he Burnley, he was he, very well. He, when he played he, against Burnley, he played good. He kept he much out the out the shack in the Ukraine, I know, I know right? Burnley, But that was, that was his first match. He got Burnley. two assists. Right? He got two assists. I'm not like, oh, swing the axe, get rid of him. So we know. And Solomon oh, Arsenal way was useless. If we go in, if we go in for a winger in the summer transfer window on the left hand side, then that tells me Werner's out, right? Especially if he. I'll can tell you what. Goal. Let's play Timo on one end, Solomon on the other, and Richie up front, and bring that trophy home. I can, I can see it. I can see exactly. it. Exactly. Right. I, I just want to ask one more manner. question before I go to Charlie. Manner, yeah. Manner, right? Because well, I've, got, the you don't want to I've got a wife understand. standing here telling me no. I need to go to bed. Okay. Right, Charlie. Next season, what do you want to see Ange change anything, as in his style? Or does he just stick to, like Conte said, it's my way or no way? Do you actually want to see him change anything? Or are you happy to just, he sticks this way or no way? I think playing against low block teams, we should change a bit. We should be a bit more... Mm -hmm defensively sturdy because otherwise we get all those breakaway goals but I think like against the big six we play very attacking and it, it usually works out fine for us the big six hasn't been our main problem this season we, no, we're one of the top not. in they're the not. big the, the low block teams are the Charlie's right really Charlie's right on this I've got yeah. the I've got the data here actually yeah, to right. back up Charlie no, keep going mate I'm listening yeah, we're, right. top. we're top no Charlie's right we're to Arsenal and Spurs have got the best record yeah, against the big six he's right yeah, so I think just against the low block teams, we should do this. And if we have the low block teams, we should be able to win a trophy because we're, we're playing amazing against the big six teams. So we just need to get the the ten, the the, top, the mid table teams. If we beat them, we'll be we'll be winning the trophies easily. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you want him to this adapt his style of play? I run a game. Adrian, yeah. Adrian, I, 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 I want, want it, mate. So you I want, want him us to adapt his style of play? Like have a plan B. Yeah. But that, not, but that's against yeah. the low block teams, not against the high block teams. Because I think we're playing no. amazing against them. Is that? I get you, but it's still having a plan B, 
not just I only play my way. And he stated in his words, we only play this way. So you're basically saying that you want him to adapt towards other teams of, say, a low block style, change his way a little bit, yeah? Mm-hmm. yeah. I've, Dan, I've always Our manager has stated... Like... Adrian, hang on a sec, mate. <laughs> Our manager has blatantly said that this, don't, this ain't going to happen with him. So I'm a bit shady with him. I'm a bit... I'm hoping he does adapt and be willing to change against exactly what you said. Do you reckon he will? I, I reckon he will in the end, but I think he's just a bit stubborn. He wants to show that he stands his ground. He is here. He's going to change his team, but yeah. in the end, he'll change. And I saw someone saying we played awful. Say we playing awful. I saw that in the comments. It, that's a, that's such a large word. We've been playing so good against the top six teams. It's more the low block teams that we always say. Is it really that how we want to play? Are we going to beat the top six? Because against Aston Villa, mm. we were playing out of our out of our minds. You know what I mean? I feel like we should just be able to just play. Uh, what's that word? I forgot the word. Goodness me! Consistent. Um, consistent, yeah, consistent. We just if we are consistent, we, we play good. If we guys, Charlie, talk, do, do you mean do you mean consistent? Do you mean consistent in the performance or the or do you mean consistent in results? Performance and results. But you okay for us? Okay, fair, no, no, fair enough. For us to be consistent in performance to get the results, we need to change the way we play in certain games. And and this is this is this is where Ange, like you said, you but think that's what I said, right? yeah, you, yeah, you know, no, listen, I'm, I'm I'm backing you up here, and this is what Dan's been saying for a while. He's he doesn't change it, so until we see him change it. We, we, we don't know. We, we, all we know is that he doesn't change it and it does cost us at times. So until he does what we want him or we think he's going to do, we can't back it up. We're, we're hoping, right? We're hoping that he changes it in those games, like the low block games. I, I personally think he's just got to learn to drop the defence a bit back in certain moments of a game, not even for a whole game. There's certain mm. moments in the game where like, if you're just not playing well, players are underperforming, Maybe we're tired. Maybe the other team just come out of the blocks and they're all over us. Just drop the defence back. Contain them. Squeeze the game. Ride it out. Like, like we did at Villa at times where we contained mm. them. And, right. We, we, we've, got, we've got a foot in the game. Now we push up. But we always seem to be high up all the time. So unless he's prepared to adapt that and get some better players in the forward line, I'm not convinced. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about a running either. I think a lot of fans are just super happy because it's just not contable. That's exactly what I said mm. and have said mm. since day one of the season that as all he had to do to win this mm. to win this fan base was play attacking football. And he'd done that in three games. Possibly the easiest job a manager has ever had to win the crowd over. I can't think of an easier one. But mm. I think he can get us a cup. But with his style of play, if he does not adapt, there is no way we are getting above top four and going for that league is not an impossible because a league winner does not concede 40, probably by the end of the season, 55 goals. Yeah, that's true. The that's where I just I want him to adapt. I but still, mate, I've got to go because I'm okay. getting a bit of grief. Yeah. Can one more. If Ange goes out, who would you go for? I'm, 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 Charlie, I'm done, with, no, I'm, I'm, I'm done with Spurs. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, will, I will become a Brighton fan or I'll support a team in the championship. I'm, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. Look, look we I'm guaranteed no European wall. football next season one way or the other. Yeah, I'm not I'll run some I'm not to the so running. Right? See you later, people. See you later, see you later Dan. Good to speak. Right? I'm not Thank concerned you, about their running. And my reason is based on one simple fact, right? Is that when we play teams that can have a go at us, it doesn't mean they say like, Newcastle, Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal couldn't beat us. They're five of the top teams before we play Sheffield United, I think, with Burnley at the end of the season. Mind you, they've got to fix this in amongst them, right, as well, right? So that's not the issue because, like, we get space. What happens with, like today, we get the second goal, Forest have to open up, we get the third goal. We are as capable of beating any of the teams we've got to play in the running as they are capable of beating us. And actually, I think, it's it, it'll be more nail biting. It'll be more nail biting because I'd rather play against a low block team when we're pounding and pounding and pounding them. But like, it'll be, but I'm not worried to play. It. And then once we play Newcastle next week, we then get a two week break 
Well, Arsenal have got four games during that week, two games against Bayern Munich and that, and then they've got other games to play as well, and then they play us. Having said that, not that a week's break did us any good when we had to play Fulham away, right? So you have that to counteract my argument, but I think we'll be fine. I think we'll get four, top four. And, you know, and we we know we need to improve, and, you know, we know we, we need to improve. But I think, yeah, this, this is the makings of a good squad. I'll be, I mean, like, to me, this summer transfer window is going to be the key for me. If I think, looking after it, I'm not looking at being a bit lucky in six games and winning a League Cup or an FA Cup with no replays, you know. I actually prefer a UEFA Cup because I think that puts you more on a map, right? But uh, we might get Champions League and we're not going to win that because no matter what recruitment we do in the summer, we're not winning the Champions League. We might get an extra couple of games and it might guarantee money to uh, help us uh, strengthen the squad with transfers because that money will be guaranteed because we get eight games instead of six, whether we qualify from our group or not. And but, Levy has said that he needs new investors to pump into the club. But, yeah, and I've seen all this. And like, I, I've gone through that financial report now and I'm not going to go through it now. And and like, yeah, I mean, we're in a good position. I mean, don't think that that 671 million debt will stop us going out. But uh, Adrian, he said he needs new investors. Yeah. So, you yeah. <laughs> know... By the way, Scott M, member for 30 months, says stop with the BS Spurs DNA is a failure. Um, can I... Fair enough. Fair enough. Can I just um, say... You can do what you want still. It's your, it's your show. <laughs> I just want to say, Charlie, whatever you do, you've got to make me one promise. Just one promise. That's all I ask. For letting you come on the oh, show, yeah. you've got to make me one promise back. Yeah. That you'll come back. For the next... How old are you? 16... For the next birthday 10 years. Today. Your birthday. Oh, yeah, happy birthday, April. bro. Happy, happy birthday, birthday Charlie. Happy birthday. Yeah, Spurs gave you a win, man. You got a win yeah. for your birthday. Um, well, I'm going to give you the best birthday present anyone's ever going to give you, right? Well, not, not ever. Start to worry, Charlie. Start to worry. <laughs> the next, the next, some, some hand sanitizer. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, right. Thanks. For the next 10 years, right? Promise me this, right? Promise me this, okay? For the next 10 years, do not, under any circumstances, no matter what happens at Spurs, <laughs> become become like me. Right? <laughs> or me, too. Do not be... Mm. I'm not going to say negative because I think I'm a realist. Don't doubt. Believe. Enjoy. Embrace it. Celebrate it. Even if we lose, but you see positives, enjoy it, Charlie, right? Because... Mm. If you're not happy in your teens and your twenties supporting Spurs, you're done. I actually enjoyed it. Even even when Spurs were getting battered in the nineties, Arsenal winning trophies, and we weren't. I still believed, right? I've still lived in hope. Then it all got killed for me. Right? It got killed for me under the last ten years. So promise me, you won't be like me and you stay as you are for the, at least ten years. Yeah, that's why I came on. And, and, just and you won't grow up to be a miserable old git like me, a long suffering oh, Spurs fan of like. Of like sixty odd years, who watched the double side play? You know what I mean, top man. Do you know I develop I develop young players, and I have to develop their mindset as well, so that when they go to the academies, they mm. don't get swallowed up. That they yeah. they shine, and then the academy mm -hmm. asks them to come back and go on a proper trial, and then keep them in that place mentally, so that they do get that contract. It's a hard thing to do, so I have to be very positive around, you know, players that I work with. But once I'm away from them, mate, I, I literally, I, I go, you see me, you watch the channel, right? You see, you see yeah. what I'm like. So look, it's, I, I, I love the fact the way you are. I love the fact you're, 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 you, you believe you're optimistic. Adrian, he believes as well. And I love the fact that you came on and challenged us. I wish, I wish more fans had the courage to do what you did. If I'm honest with you, Charlie, Charlie where do you live? Do you get six, to go to six, Lancaster? Do you know what? You're 16, you're 16, Charlie. And you've put a lot of adults to shame. There's adults that come on our channel. They give I, I it all this. Think, yeah. They give it all this. They don't mm. come on. You're 16. You've come on. You're like, yeah. nah, I'm going to say what I want. And I'm going to come back at him when he speaks. So, I, I've, Charlie, I've had... Charlie, my, Charlie, concern, Charlie. Thanks so much. My, my, one of my concerns over the recent 
PR disaster with Daniel Levy, putting up the prices for old people like me, old gits like me that no one wants to talk to, we're just old farts. Who, who, who steeped in Spurs history. Your granddad, yeah. Charlie. Your and granddad, younger fans your like you as well, which also concerns me a lot because, you know, I said to someone, when are we going on about, oh, the increase for the old people that's going to be taken away, the subsidies and all that. I'm wondering about us, why are we only talking about that? If you're talking about Kane and his wages, which were like 16 million or 20 million a year, whatever it was, you know, why aren't we talking about subsidising people your age who are below the voting and alcohol drinking age in theory you might be a pisshead charlie i don't know right <laughs> i'm sure you're not i'm sure you're not right you know and so i come down big on that i mean my my real dislike for levy came from the european super league fiasco they just wanted the 300 mil because it helped with the stadium debt it was all money 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 right don't know about investors and all that so i just wonder as as a young fan support, I fear I fear for the legacy of younger supporters of this club. I fear for that. That is my fear, right? But if I'm dead, it won't matter because I won't have, I won't have to worry about it, right? So, do you get to go to games at all? Where where do you live exactly? What area? I live in Holland. Holland. Oh, you live in so Holland. Pretty hot. Yeah. Did you go and watch go much. And or PSV or or what? Well. My cousin's there, they're Ajax supporters, but I'm Tottenham through and through. So I try to go like three, four games a year, but it's pretty hard. It's, it's really expensive. Why, why, do you live in, why do you live in Holland? How, how come you moved well, out there? My mum's English and my dad's Dutch, and um, they decided to live here. So that's why I live in Holland. Were, were, you, were you born in England and then you moved out there? Nah, but I've lived like, I, I live on and off. You know what I mean? It's a bit, my first three years, I just was in England half time and then back in Holland. But since, Four years I've been here, full time. Spurs okay. have got supporters bases out in Holland. Are you a member of any of those clubs or what? Uh, Amsterdam Spurs. Well, I, to be honest, I didn't even look. I didn't even know they had it. But I just, I've seen it a couple of months ago, and I'd love to. Uh, what's it called? I'd love to join them too. I would love to do I'm that. Sure, they have you. I'm sure they'll have you. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Why is this young lad? Come on, <laughs> all, yeah. all calm and relaxed, yeah. not giving it all. Let me land, bro. Fam and all this shit. I know why. It's because you're in Holland. You're actually in a calm chill mm. place you know mm. you're, you're in a good environment do you um do you um did you know about um players like mickey van der ven before he came to spurs then because i know i know he was he came from a german club but he was dutch did you know much about him yeah he came from fc Volendam. he he was well i live in harlem that's ne like literally next to amsterdam so that's basically ajax he he was always a good player he was not that popular though when he went to wolfsburg he was like a dutch player going to germany which it's it's like a big thing because yeah Dutch players all staying... Germans hate each other. That's a war thing. Though. Yeah, not really. Oh yeah, they actually do. But um, <laughs> I think that was just him going to Wolfsburg. There wasn't a lot after that, but more like it, it is a Dutch person going to Germany. What do you know about Martin is... Yol and the Dutch fans? Because I've seen Martin, Martin Yol turn up. Turn he's up. Too... Uh, I, I, Adrian, he might be too he's young. Too young. Yeah. He's too young. Yeah, Martin Yol turned up. A mate of mine. Who ran, who Martin, ran, Martin Joel basically when Spurs were just awful for years and years and years Martin Joel was the manager that got us back into Europe like he got us back into that mm. sick um, and then and then you had the Harry Redknapps Pochettino's Contes they all came after Martin Joel Martin Joel's the one that got us back oh, yeah, into Martin Joel I, I got like I, you know where Spurs talk show right he's got bald hair and we don't the channel, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was on an interview with them and uh, in the comments they said I've got the chin of Martin Joel. Oh, yeah, you did, did actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you, I think you've he played, got... he played for West Brom, didn't he? Was it over here? He played for West Brom, I think. It was you, you, you've got his chin, I've got his hair. Well, yeah. no hair. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Um, yeah. Listen, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Charlie, listen. Um, email me your mobile number so I can WhatsApp yeah. you. And if ever you want to come on, you can just WhatsApp me. You'll get you on, Chad. Great to you come on. on. I really, I really yeah. like to hear a younger Spurs fans' perspective. You know, I like so much. Hear. I really enjoyed it, guys. Yeah, and and you're, 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 sorry you're, you're, if you're, 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 you're you a bit too much, but I'll tell you what, you you're held your ground well. And fucking fair play to you, man. Fair play. Thank you so much. Listen, coming on these shows with, with the older lot, <clears throat> it'll make you better as well. You'll learn yeah. more from this than going on shows with people your age. It's, it's just, yeah. 
you know, you learn yeah, more exactly. from, from, from your elders. Um, all right, quickly big up to Dunzel Dork, Dietrich Kane, Tin Man, Danny the Bun, uh, Dietrich with a few more, A User with a couple of super chats as well, Dietrich again, Deo for becoming a channel member, Della Spurs as always, and Scott M channel member. Big up to all of you guys, thank you so much for your super chats. Everyone yeah, in the chat tonight, the guys in the channel for hanging in with us, yeah. We've had uh, over 400 people live across all the social media platforms tonight. Smash the like for us. Smash the like for uh, Dan's channel, Hotspur Hood, and for Alex's channel, uh, Mr. Box Office TV. Uh, if you're interested in Facebook groups, Spurs Die Hard, that's Adrian's group, 30, 13,000 members. We're going to try and get Charlie on more often. Charlie, happy birthday again, bro. Yeah, Thanks happy so birthday. much, guys. Thanks, gentlemen, for the chance, yeah? I really enjoyed yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Good. Listen. You're 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 an absolute legend. I hope channel, you won't man. intimidate. We're, we're gonna, guys we're, we're, we'll, we'll try and get a we'll try and get a statue <laughs> of you built outside the, the stadium. <laughs> um, guys, we will be back tomorrow night for our Monday podcast. Iggy, myself, Mari, Will, the gang, whatever. Uh, tune in for that one, and then there'll be shows yeah, during the week. In, guys, good listen, good listen. The the Newcastle match. I don't know what we're going to do yet because Iggy, myself, and JP were going to that game, and the train gets back to london at 10 p.m so i think what i'm going to do is do a 12 o'clock show but i don't know how many people are going to tune in so it's going to be a late 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 one mm. for the newcastle game um but otherwise big up as always thanks for watching the show big up to adrian and charlie for staying the distance thanks so much man <laughs> really enjoyed it yeah. you're welcome yeah, around, man. great show guys fantastic the first game we look for robbie them away, them away. When we got them away, them away. them away, them away. When we got them away, them away.